astronauts to the moon. Ignition sequence start. Two, one. What's going on everyone? It's Jaronism, back with another live video for you this evening. It is live, glad you're joining me. So thank you to those in the chat, to those at home, to those in their car, to those in an airplane, wherever you might be. Thank you for joining me, I do appreciate it. I'm gonna be taking calls tonight, so I will give out that number in a little bit. Probably about 10 minutes, we're gonna cover quick two topics first, and then we will come back to the phones. I'll give that number out. You can call in from wherever you might be for whatever reason you may have. If you have a question, comment, uh, something that's going on in the world now, uh, something flat earth related, something round earth related, you hate me, you love me, doesn't matter, call in. If you get too crazy, I could just dump you. It's easy. So what we're going to start out with is, let me get this going for you. Hey, you got another subscriber. Thank you very much. Buzz Aldrin takes a chair shot. What's better than that? Let's look at... A few things that happened uh, recently. If you've seen this uh, Flat Earth Talk video, basically what happened is Nathan Thompson, who is the founder of the official Flat Earth and Globe Earth discussion page on Facebook, uh, ran into a NASA employee, uh, questions him or you know, kind of uh, rushes him here at the uh, Starbucks. And there was also a video done that we're going to watch in a second here by a science lover. Um, but I did want to show a few things here first and just kind of point out that I'm not in complete agreement with this kind of uh, rush, I guess you might call it uh, rush journalism. Um, I think there's better ways to go about it. You're not going to get a good conversation with somebody kind of coming at them this way. So if you are going to do something like this, it would be good to go up to him and say, hey, do you mind if I ever gave you a call and we had an interview or I was able to have a conversation with you? That's how you're going to get these guys to... Um, to say some, and he said some interesting things. For instance, saying that the astronaut almost drowned because of saliva, which doesn't make any sense. It's not the official case. Um, so those are the kind of things that I think would be better if it was a conversation or an interview where you're talking with this guy and let them kind of hang themselves, not just uh, rushing them at a Starbucks is not the best way to do it. But let's scroll down here a little bit and look at some of the comments. And the first one here, let's uh, read this one because I think it's classic, but uh, it definitely deserves to be the... Uh <laughs> Keyboard Warrior, comment of the week, no doubt. How about this one? If you don't believe in science, then stop using electricity, your cell phone and camera, and the internet, because guess what? The internet works thanks to satellites that orbit our roundish planet. So it's not just a one comment thing either. You see here you got 164 thumbs up from uh, people who also in some way believe that satellite comes from, or I mean, uh, internet comes from satellites in orbit. So then you look at these comments down here. Uh, Daniel Robinson representing says, actually they work based on cables on the bottom of oceans. Satellites are not real. They use ships and long cables miles long. And somebody else comes back and says, yeah, for everyday people who don't mind slower speeds overseas, the sub-communications cables network, then microwave link for fast, rich users, then satellites for rural areas. This person says, I'm curious as to your explanation of how global positioning systems work if there are no satellites. So go ahead and look up how phones with, uh, with no GPS know your location. It's easily triangulation. You don't need satellites to tell you where you are. You just need three cell phone towers which uh, I hate to tell you, exist on the ground. They don't exist in the, uh, in the thermosphere. They're not orbiting the Earth. They didn't cost $350 million. And they don't just maintain orbits for 20 years and all the fun stuff that we're told satellites do. Um, this person says, ah, ha, 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 how the hell does GPS then work? Work then, magic? So these people are classic. Um, you can see the ISS orbiting the Earth. What is it if it's not real? So again, because somebody tells you that the ISS is in the sky and then they tell you what time a light will go over your head you can't then draw from that the conclusion that they must be the same thing that the thing I see on TV with people inside of it must be the light I see in the sky because someone told me that it doesn't even equate doesn't you can't go from one to the other it's not it doesn't work that way 
Um, so some people, yeah, I just basically wanted to point that out. But let's go to this video over here. One second, I'll bring it up. This is the video I was talking about. Um, it was done by, and let me get you the right name before I say it, Penguins Zero. Penguins. He's got uh, subscriber base 1.7 million. Uh, his video's already got 116,000 views, and this is him just extremely frustrated um, about this particular YouTube video. But let's hear how he uh, voices his frustration. If there's any children in the room, I would uh, put some earmuffs on them right about now. What's up, everybody? It's Critical. Today I saw a video that really salted my rectal flaps. It's Let's start out with that. So, is, I don't know if that's supposed to be funny. Like, today I saw a video that really salted my rectal flaps. I don't know. Let's keep going. Another sub. Thank you. From a flat earther as he harasses a NASA employee at a Starbucks, and it's truly just infuriating. I'm not going to go into depth about how stupid flat earthing is, so I'll just sum it up by saying to anyone who truly believes the earth is flat, you're wrong. It's not an opinion. It's genuinely just you're wrong. So, it's not an opinion. It's it's not. It's just generally it's it's a fact. You're wrong. Make okay good evidence there. Also, I'm sorry in advance that this troglodyte filmed this vertically. I guess flat earthers also don't believe in horizontal videos. Those must just be a scam from government reptilian humanoid officials. But anyway, let's dive in. Pardon me. All right, guys. I'm here with a real NASA employee. Legit NASA employee. So here's our protagonist. I didn't mean to pause it during a shaky cam screen. That's my apologies there. I know this looks like one of the fucking photographs from the Ring movies. But for how stupid this man's actions are from this point forward, I think it'd even be better if he had blurred his own face out. And I asked him. I said, uh, astronauts have almost died in space. Uh, they get they got water in their suit and they almost drowned. And he said it was because of saliva. I'm gonna get this out of the way. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about here. I, I don't know about astronauts drowning in space, except maybe drowning in pussy when they get back from space. Wow. So he, he doesn't know anything about astronauts almost drowning in space. And even though it's, you know, happened twice, I think, and one time that was pretty major, when the helmet filled up with water, and now they have to have snorkels. Um, that's pretty significant. And for somebody that's such a big science lover, who obviously thinks that uh, astronauts are slightly below gods, we go gods and astronauts, and that they are just cleaning up on the women every uh, during the off season. Um, it just makes no sense to me that this is the kind of comments we get from people. He says he's never heard of astronauts almost drowning in space. Well, have you heard of the uh, plankton that was found on the windows of the ISS? Look that up and then go ahead and make some new excuse about that one too. But su I suggest that the people who are so into science in every way possible do a little bit more research into what it is that they believe. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just say, I love science and I don't have to look into it all. Because there's a lot of things coming out, like the 75 papers that were retracted recently because they were done fraudulently. How about the plankton in space? How about the fact that our satellite communication, as people think, or our internet comes from the satellites when the internet is done via cables that are across the ocean so just because somebody told you and signed in some sort of conversation at some point that our phones and our internet talk to space doesn't mean that that's true you might want to do a little bit of research on that yes that makes sense to me but as far as this man's lunacy is concerned i don't know what the fuck he's going on about i also don't see why this topic is the smoking gun for flat earthers ah astronauts have a dangerous job we knew it the earth is flat no it's astronauts have a dangerous job they're in a pool they're drowning in water Everything that we see is CGI. We've never seen a real video or picture of the Earth from space. Those are the things that are causing flat earthers to question what we've all been told. Things that you should question, go look up pictures of the Earth. Go to the live ISS feed and watch that. Try to find a night scene. You'll see nothing but black. Then go look up ISS at night on Google and look, look at all the beautiful pictures of all the lights on Earth and all the beautiful scenery. Then go back to the live feed. Call me when you find anything that resembles the pictures. They won't, because they can't show it to you live. Also, this badly bearded biker looking dude is the founder of an official Flat Earth talk panel and what? Let's go ahead and start the barrage of ad hominem attacks. Website or something, and they were really excited that he ran into a real NASA employee in the video description. This guy right here, hold on, I'm gonna wait for him to get to the front of the line. And then I'm gonna ask him some more questions. 
There's a real NASA employee right here. Just wanted to point out this badly shaven beard here. This is a weak beard game. It looks like a hairy toilet seat. If you do this with your beard, stop. I know why he's doing this. He wants to make it look like he has a stronger jawline than he has. And it doesn't even look like he has a jawline, judging from this angle. It looks like his neck is trying to eat his cheeks. And with the way his beard is shaven, it looks like armpits. If I didn't see his nose, I would be 100% convinced I'm looking at a close-up of an armpit. Hey, my man. <laughs> my man. Sir. Just the, the spacewalk. He won't, he won't talk to me. Sir. Now this mongoloid is starting to attract attention to himself, the other customers have now been made aware of his presence, and unfortunately for them, they're in for quite the shit show coming up. Look, he was all nice. He was all nice. He gave me NASA cartoon freaking emblems. <laughs> that <clears throat> Let me stop right here and just mention that we have to remember, number one, that the deception that's going on, we don't know which people know. Okay, so we can't just go to people on the street that work for NASA because they are probably deceived themselves. So all those people that are at JPL that watch Curiosity land on Mars, which is a complete and total joke, fabrication, a lie, a hoax. Well, if I had all those people in a room, I wouldn't even be able to guess if any of them knew that. Because all that they're doing is they're designing these robots, they're designing these trajectories and these flight paths, and then they're handing it off to NASA, who's sending them up in a rocket, and then next thing they know, they start getting data returned and audio signals to their computer. And at that point, why would anybody question it? Because they designed it, they saw it on TV get launched to space, and they're getting tones, is what they've programmed the satellite to do, is respond to them with tones. So it's kind of hard to picture why one of them would question it, because they really are questioning their whole career. That's just a tough thing for those people to do. What we're trying to show them is that they should question it. And that somebody who's working on one of those things should maybe program something in there to, to and again, they'd have to put their job on the line. But believe me, there is no, or don't believe me, don't trust me. I always say that. But when I'm saying believe me, I mean, just look into it. We do not have any remote control robots on Mars that are driving around for the sixth year when we designed it to work for a year and a half. That's not the way electronics work. What about all the dust storms? We all grew up and heard, oh, they have these crazy dust storms on Mars where this dust blows all over. Go look at the Curiosity rover. It's got all kinds of moving parts and things that would get filled with dust and break in no time. Yet this thing just keeps going, keeps trucking along, no problem. It's got a drill, it drills holes, it's got a laser, and it looks just like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. That is a sticker, you stupid, soggy scrotum of a man. It is a fucking sticker. It's not a cartoon thingy emblem, it is a sticker. Now he won't talk to me. He won't talk to me at all. Sir. Just tell him why they almost drown in space. Please. Have a nice day, okay? Come on. So I mean at that point you have to look the guy's being kind. You know, have a nice day, okay? Rather than say get out of my face. And I think all of us need to put ourselves in that position. We're confronted by somebody in a Starbucks who is being kind of rude and in our face about things. I would act the same way. And I'm not going to grant somebody an interview when they've been kind of rude. I you know, tell somebody, talk to you later, get out of my face. Uh, probably more rude than this guy. Um, but again, I understand why people want to get this on video and they want to talk to this guy. I just don't think it's the best method. You won't even chat with me? Nope. You, you, you hate Americans? Is that it? Excuse me? Hey, yeah. How the hell did you get that? Don't ever accuse me of that again. Well, hey, I'm okay? just curious. If you want to chat with me and answer my question. Now this fucking degenerate makes his move and starts harassing the NASA employee and then accuses him of hating Americans because by not answering one lunatic stupid questions, it means you hate all of America. I guess... And this is why it's an in-between thing. Is it a lunatic stupid question to ask somebody about the drowning of an astronaut in space? Um, I don't think so. But again, it's not the right venue. And again, I kind of do agree with asking that question. I wish I could talk to NASA employees and ask them these questions, uh, but I just don't think the place was right. But then again, you know, it's it's not me. I can't I can't speak for somebody else. He chose to go up to him, and um, he obviously he's got a problem with the things going on in this world, and so do I. So it's at no point in this man's underdeveloped brain did he happen to think, you know, maybe it's a little uncomfortable for him to answer a question on camera while I'm being a dick to him. I don't have to chat with yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. That's Step true. Over there. <clears throat> so we've seen enough of that but basically that's what i wanted to show you is just uh the guy making the he didn't come up with any evidence or any you know rebuttal to the to the claim in fact he said he's never heard of an astronaut drowning in space 
But uh, he went to ad hominem attacks. He went to making fun of his beard to basically, I guess, calling him fat. I don't know if that's what that means when you say somebody's neck is trying to eat their cheeks, but whatever that means, um, certainly didn't provide anything uh, beneficial to the viewer. So I did want to show you why we've got questions with NASA and why we think that these things need to be looked into. So let's go back to uh, this browser here and we're going to look at this here. This is on the physics-astronomy.com. Okay, this is talking about China reaches the moon, snapping incredible, never before seen, high definition images. So let's go ahead and take a look at some images from Chinese orbiter. Um, this is from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So we'll see this image here. Good to know that uh, their craft didn't blow out a hole uh, just like NASA's didn't. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this one here, the little robot is, oops, sorry. There we go. The little robot is driving away there. Let's go to the next picture. Another picture could have been taken anywhere. Um, it's just some little path and rocks. And let's go to the next one. Don't even know, just more rocks. And, okay, this is the image that I have a question about. All right, so let's look at this image. Now, you'll notice here this shadow here is what caught me off. I said, well, that's a weird looking shadow. And I was trying to figure out which way do the shadows go. This looks like the sun is this direction coming this way kind of makes sense you'd have a shadow here a shadow here well this very next image is actually the image right next to it uh, I'll go back so you can see that they are right next to each other meaning that you can actually connect this image with this image they're side by side this rock is this rock okay and you'll see that there's no shadow at all here which I thought was interesting so how can there be no shadow here but then there's shadows here. So I just had my question, so you know what I always do, and there's one more picture here, this one. And you'll see back here, isn't this funny? What is going on here? This is like the rocks and the this kind of certain dirt ends right here at this line. But anyway, I always put things through on photo forensics. So if I go over to photo forensics, you'll see I dropped this image here. A couple interesting things. First of all, if you've ever been to photo forensics, when you put an image in, usually what you get is the darks turn light when you do an ELA analysis and the lights turn dark. Now, you'll see here, watch this black shadow here as I go over. You'll see the shadow doesn't change, which, uh, you know, would usually, again, you can't say anything based on photo forensic. Like, this means the image is fake. Can't do that. Uh, you can just uh, lean towards that, and that's what I certainly do. You'll also see back here there's some questionable stuff going on. Um, this little box that's here, that's very interesting. That wouldn't happen naturally. Okay, so you can see that. And we're just going to go back and forth. Okay, now, the great thing is about photo forensics, they've added something new. And this has just been in the last um, probably two weeks that I've noticed this. This button here, it says uh, similar search. Okay, so you can bring up the similar search. And then you can search through TinEye or Bing or Google or Root About Reddit. And it will do this master search on these images. So I'm doing it on TinEye, and we'll see that we get these results here. Uh, 298 places, it searched over 19.2 billion images, and it's got images all over of this same image. So what I did is I noticed that it looks like it's going by date. So you got April 1st, April, September 24th, I thought it was going backwards, February 2nd. So I just went down here and went for the fun of it to 30. So I just went to the very last page, and then I went down here, and See, okay, so this image right here, and I noticed something I've never seen before because I've never done tin eye searches or anything. But I see this image is the full image, and then you'll see there's this button switch. So what you'll notice now, and I don't know if you'll see it on the screen, but watch when I switch back and forth between these images. You can actually see this rock here gets completely shifted with an image that was uploaded. What date was that one? April 4th. Oh, I'm sorry, March 24th. So you can go switch, and you'll see that. The rock comes out from behind here. Now look at this background. See how much that shifts? You can actually watch these rocks right here completely switch to the left. They're right here. Look where they end up. So I don't know. That's not just a parallax issue. It's not like this camera kind of came around here. That is a huge shift back here. Pretty crazy. So we will... Uh, I definitely want people to go through and look at these things. Uh, you can bring up any of these images. I didn't go through more. I just found this right now. You'll see those rocks in the background. Look at the rocks in the background shift. 
So this is just more evidence that uh, if if science was what we're told, you know, if science was everything that it's taught to be, then people like NASA, people like Neil deGrasse, people like Brian Cox would be calling these things frauds. They'd be investigating images that are so-called images from the moon, but that's not how science works anymore. If China comes back and says they went to the moon and they took images, and NASA says, yeah, they were there, well, then it doesn't matter what they put out. You can't question it. That's what science has become. So Neil deGrasse would tell you if you asked him, do you think China's been to the moon? He'll say, absolutely. Have you looked at the images? Well, why would I? Why would I look at them? Oh, yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Have you actually looked at them, Neil? No, no. Of course he hasn't. Of course he hasn't looked at them, because if he did, any rational thinking person would start to see the anomalies with all these images and the problems with them. But that's not uh, beneficial to his career. Okay, if Neil deGrasse looked into these images and saw that they're fake, even though we're told scientists love to prove other scientists wrong, if you think that Neil deGrasse wants to find fake images from Chinese landers and bring them to the public's attention, you're dead wrong. That's not what science is about. Science is about keeping the going narrative going, keeping the idea that we went to the moon going, even though any rational person who has the ability to say, you know what, I don't care that some people are going to call me dumb. I don't care that some people are going to call me unscientific. I don't care that all intellectuals think we went to the moon. I'm smart enough to look at the evidence and draw my own conclusion and realize there's no possible way any human being has been to the moon. But people can't do that. They're afraid of what their friends might say, what their brother might say, what their employer might say. Well, when you get to the point where you realize you've been lied to in every area of your life, then eventually you'll realize it doesn't matter what people think anymore because it doesn't do you any good just to believe in lies so that your friends think you're cool just doesn't work so that being said i wanted to go through those two things and let me tell you the phone number now i'll take some calls for the rest of the show try and keep it short the phone number is 562-735-3528 give me one second and i will try and bring this up let me transfer this and i'll turn on my phone line and hopefully this works good and on the first call i'm just going to make sure that everybody can hear you so Hold on for a second so that we know that um, everyone can hear both me and the caller. So like last night doesn't happen or for 15 minutes I talked and nobody heard me, which is which is really cool. Uh, so again, 562-735-FLAT or 562-735-FLAT. You can give me a call and we can talk. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, join us for Globebusters tomorrow. Should be a good show. Um... But that is it tomorrow at noon Pacific. And that is on the Globebusters channel, which uh, you can just search Globebusters or it's youtube.com slash Globebusters and the number one. YouTube.com Globebusters one. So again, number 562-735-3528. I'm going to go ahead and wait and see if anybody calls. Um, I don't I see some pending requests. Should You shouldn't. Oh, there we go. What's going on? You're on with Chernism. Who's this? Hey, how's it going today? Good. Just wait one second. I want to make sure that everybody heard you and me, and then we'll continue one second, getting the uh, confirmation. All right, cool. One second. Okay. I think that everybody heard. Okay, go ahead. What's up? All right. So I got a couple questions for you. Um, so I, I know you've been in the conspiracies before you got into the flat earth, so you don't really talk about it a whole lot. Do you still believe in aliens? Are you totally against the idea of aliens? Or, or where do you stand on that? Because, you know, there was a ton of whistleblowers out there for that kind of stuff, and a lot of conspiracy theories were out, you know, and that had a way bigger following than flat earth had. So what's your opinions on that? And I'll go ahead and hang up and let you go on from there. So Okay, appreciate the call. I'll answer that, and then I'll open the... Uh phone lines right back up um for me I, yeah aliens i don't see any evidence of that um you know at all and and i think that a lot of it is um i guess you can call it controlled opposition it's my same opinion when you talk about a funny thing happened on the way to the moon which was bart Seibrel's uh video and i think that he was given that information or given that video on purpose because what it does is it sets people up hey thank you Oh, you guys can't see that. Shoot. Let me bring that up so you can see that. I don't want you not to see that. You missed Neil dancing. There he is. That's pretty funny. 
So yes, everybody, you get to see Neil dance Neil deGrasse style with any donation. So thank you very much to the person who just donated. Didn't see your name. Uh, to Rebel, thank you. Um, so I think what they did was there is they want you to, if you are somebody who's going to question the moon landings, which they knew many people would, that they wanted you to have somewhere where you go, you kind of prove it to yourself, but what does that Bart Cybrel do, that Bart Cybrel video do? It proves the round earth. It proves the globe because they're in orbit and they happen to be covering the window a little bit to give it the more uh, ball looking earth. And there's supposedly a hundred thousand miles from earth, but really they're in orbit of it. In my opinion, that's just a purposeful deception because really I don't think you can go to orbit and I think that they were not in orbit. And so that's what I think that does. Same thing with aliens. Every astronaut that's ever been has at some point mentioned aliens in some way. And I think if you mention aliens, then it reconfirms the whole idea of space, the whole idea of the ball earth. And, you know, I haven't done a video on it yet, but I, I think I've kind of come to my own conclusion. That I think the idea of space, the distances, the planets, what they are, is just a computer simulation. It's a computer simulated environment so that you or I can't prove it wrong. And that's what they were smart about. They said, wait a second, if nobody can go to space, as long as we go first and we say all these things exist out there, then nobody can ever disprove us. Because how can you disprove something if you can't go prove it? For instance, I can only disprove Saturn exists and Saturn is the size that they tell me if I can go to Saturn and measure it and say, no, you guys lied. It's half the size or sorry, it's half the distance or Mars is only this big. Or, But if they know I can't go to space, then they are completely safe in their fabricated world because everything, and it's a self-correcting system. And when I get this from is look up Dr. James Gates. He's the one that found the zeros and ones at the very base of the equations that are used to construct the universe. Now he's going around telling the whole world that we live in a matrix, that we're all ones and zeros, but he fails to realize that the ones and zeros he found were in the base equations of the universe, not of the earth, not of your best friend, not of your wife, he found the ones and zeros at the base equation of the universe, and that's because I do think that that is a computer simulation started by Vandiver Bush, Claude Shannon, information theory. So check that out. So no, aliens, if there are aliens, they come from another area of Earth. Another area of Earth, they've been here longer. Maybe they're a different species. I don't know. I've never seen any of them, but they, uh, I don't think that they are from other galaxies or other star systems. Uh, just think how silly that is. These beings that flew all the way light years, got to Earth, and then crashed in New Mexico. What, what does that? Does that make any sense? They couldn't navigate around New Mexico, but they could navigate the, you know, 10 million light years to get here. I doubt it. All right, phone lines back open again. Sorry, I won't try and talk so long this time. Uh, let's see here. I think we've got a call. Nope. Maybe. What's going on? Your journalism. Hey, how's it going? My name's Lewis. What's up, Lewis? Yeah, it's not that that matters. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, I've been watching your videos a little bit. Thank you. Streaming, and uh, from my perspective, if you if you st I think the Earth is a globe, but okay. if it was flat, wouldn't you expect looking at the sky that the dome shape? that it seems to have it certainly appears as though the sky has a dome shape wouldn't you expect that to uh your your perception of it shouldn't the angular perception of that change as you travel across the ground which it it does what do, what do you mean um no it doesn't the angular perception of the sky doesn't change well, if you're, yeah, if you uh, if, if you're standing underneath, you drive all the way across the state or the country, it will look exactly the same shape. Oh, you mean okay, shape wise? Well, personally, my belief yeah. my belief is that the the sky is flat, that it's not a dome. Um, but I mean, you you would agree, right? If you were standing, if you and I were standing underneath Polaris, it would be right above our heads. <clears throat> and as we started driving south, it would slowly lower itself in the sky all the way till we got to the equator, at which time it would be at the horizon, correct? Yeah, but the blue, the if you did this during the day, if you did it during the daytime, mm -hmm. when the sky is lit up by the sun, mm -hmm. it's much more clear that there, there's, if, 
I, I understand you said a moment ago that you don't your your personal belief about the shape of the sky is that it's flat. Correct. But it certainly appears during the day that it's domed. Well, my my perception of that is that anything like the sky meets the horizon in the distance, right? So it's it's anything if you picture yourself this is how i picture it let's put ourselves in your bedroom okay wherever you might be right now picture that room that you're in now picture that room is as big as the city you live in okay but the roof doesn't get any higher just picture a very low ceiling eight feet tall and the room that you're in is as big as a city so it's huge right if you had a light that was on the top of that ceiling and it ran away from you in not very far the the light would dip below your horizon the light would continue going on it's going to go all the way to the other side of the city but you can't see that far you can only see until the ceiling reaches the floor and that's why we get a sunset it would look like a sunset to you as that light went racing across the ceiling it would go further it would hit the floor and then everything past that now picture that that light was lighting your your area up of the room and as it took off the other way when it got not very far from you i don't know how far 100 yards 200 yards 300 yards it would your part of the room would become dark but the light is still on the light is still going that to the other side of the, so if you looked up you might get the idea of hey that that ceiling looks like a dome because it's above me when i'm in the middle of the room and i can see it stretching down and hitting the floor in all directions so that's why it looks like a dome but it's i think it's flat like a ceiling of your room i i feel like if it was in fact a dome that did physically connect do, do you let, I, I guess i should clarify that do you think that the sky dome thing connects physically to the ground at some point if it did i wouldn't know and my guess would be if it did it would connect to mountains it would not connect to the ground that it would you well know, that you're splitting hairs there well it's okay. not well but i mean the thing is is that most people think of like a physical dome and i know the thing is about flat earthers is we don't have an agreement on anything because we've all been lied to there, there's no way we could possibly have an agreement um but we all have a general idea so i know some people think of like a dome connecting well, to the ground right but then that's like saying the yeah. sky is physical like there's an actual sky that's physical but i don't really think of the sky that way i think the sky is the sky and so i think it's flat it's not like part of a dome some people believe in the dome and it it doesn't matter to me if there is a dome or isn't i'm just searching for the truth so it's you know when i make it a a statement like that it's my opinion and I, you know, I'm just basing that off of the way I see things. But I mean, mm. so, I mean, you're saying that if it looked, you're saying it should look like a dome if it connects to the ground? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm saying it certainly, I'm saying it looks like a dome. And if you believe, which you just now said that you didn't, mm -hmm. but if you believe that the dome connects to the ground, that puts a finite space on the dome. And then also that thereby your perception of of that dome it should it should look like you're moving in relation to the dome when you travel but it doesn't Correct. and that was the that and, was what I was gotcha and my reason for that would be because your the dome doesn't change the sky doesn't change as you move across the earth it's still flat and it still goes as far as you well, can see and each person almost I, it's almost like you live in a snow globe that that's the way that each person perceives the sky. So I see. I know what you're saying about the dome because it looks like if you look uh, up, it looks like you a live. A snow in a, globe would present a whole different set of optics. C correct. But what I'm saying is that you it only appears that way. That's the appearance of what you see. If you move, that dome just moves with you. It's almost like you're underneath a glass on a flat. I don't know how to describe it. If you're on a, a basketball court and you lived underneath a glass and it moved with you the whole time, it's just your appearance because you're looking through more atmosphere, which bends the sky. It's just because it's, it's further away, bends the sky down. It's just your. It's just the way things have to look. Imagine how would it look otherwise? How would you have a sky that goes off into the well, distance? If, well, Go ahead. If, if the Earth was a globe, that's exactly how it would be. If the ground curved away from the sky in the same rate that the, the sky curved round then that's then that is another situation where you would never perceive the sky moving in relation to you well just say what but you said again you said a, the sky a dome it should right i agree but you said something about the sky curves at the same rate as the ground uh it certainly appears to 
And on average, aggregate, uh, I would I would be confident enough to say that it does. What about, you're talking about the sky that includes the stars, everything that curves the same rate as the. Uh, okay, you're, you're good. Good. Good clarification. Atmosphere is what I'm talking. Okay, about. you're talking about the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's just the same as like items appear to get smaller as they go away from us, but in reality they don't. We know that, right? If a car drives away from me hmm. at 100 yards, it's going to be tiny. It might even disappear at 200 yards. That appears to me that things get smaller. We know they don't. So I think of the dome as being the same thing or the sky being the same thing. It appears to look like a dome, but that's just because of perspective and our optics. And, and I see what you're saying. Um, my only question would be is when it comes to like refraction, when you're talking about looking at the distance and they say, well, these things are actually lifted up over the... So why don't we see like um, a bunch of stars all like bunched up at the horizon? If if I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, oh. Well, that's because the the light that gets refracted. So you're talking, you're bringing up like the ship over the horizon example. Yeah, they they say that buildings are pulled up over the horizon or whatever, right? Yeah. But if we're looking well, out, I mean, if that has to do with water. If there's water there, then yeah, the water vapor just above the level of the water creates the uh, pressure and density difference that uh, bends the light differently than it otherwise would have. And so if you were, if you are so lucky as to find a perfectly flat piece of land, um, you wouldn't have that optical struggle that you have with water. Water presents that challenge. So you're saying that there's no refraction if it's just um, ground, only ground. If it, you're saying water yeah. causes the refraction. Yeah. If it's just dirt, if, if you just got perfectly flat dirt, uh, so the, what is it, the Dead Sea, if, you, if that didn't have any water in it, and actually there might not be enough water in it to make refraction happen. It might not be enough to change the temperature and density of the air enough. But, uh, yeah, over land you would not have that light refraction. Okay. Um, and so you're saying over water... So explain this to me then. If we're in space, should we be seeing refraction from the ISS because they're looking out of a window that has no atmosphere, there's nothing in space at all, and yet they're looking at the Earth by looking through the atmosphere. So where is the, you know, I've seen if I put a straw into a cup of water, how crazy... Well, from, from that perspective, from the perspective of looking, the atmosphere, the theory, right, the theory of the ISS looking through the atmosphere the atmosphere becomes a lens at that point and so whatever is behind the lens would be refracted so if the sun was well the sun's a bad example if there were if there was a well-known constellation of stars that you put just through the horizon and looked at it through the iss uh that you might you might notice some refraction and some warping see that's crazy uh, that's, but that that's that a that's uh principally different than the warping we're talking about over water on well, high level it be? of objects that are also on the water. Okay, so picture you're on the ISS now, we're watching the sunrise, it's actually coming up over water, and yes. that's like, wouldn't that be the most refraction you would ever see? You're going from no atmosphere, yeah, no, and there is. no density. There is, there, is re there, there is refraction when that happens, um, and it only happens for a split second because the from that point of view the atmosphere is so thin that there is only a split second of time that the sun is at that angle okay um i appreciate the call thank you for that and i'll be taking another one next caller go ahead the calls lines are open that was quick you're on with jaronism what's up oh is this live you are live as it gets well you know, I'm 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 grateful to be able to uh, connect with you. Uh, appreciate uh, you know have 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 watched uh, many of your uh, YouTube videos and uh, followed some of your debates with with others. And uh, I appreciate the uh, ongoing coverage. Uh, I, I essentially it, it, what, what you're do, what you're helping to do. You and others are helping to do is to dethrone NASA. Uh, whatever whatever institutional authority legitimacy it, whatever is left it, it's destroying that and and that is uh, that's an important thing there there are big bureaucracies certainly where I live out here a lot of people work I mean they're right down the road from me here on the east coast and, and in the Baltimore Washington area so I don't have to explain to anyone 
how material their presence is in terms of the money, the budgets, the, the careers, the jobs, and the work that is being done by you and others, irrespective of your uh, agreement or disagreement, on, you know, new speculative alternative cosmologies. I mean, mm-hmm. hey, think about this for a second. I think I think it's wonderful that young people now are 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 going to be uh uh they're going to have to go back and they're going to have to study Copernicus, they're going to have to study Kepler. They're going to have to really learn the math if they're if they're going to undertake to defend uh, the existing paradigm, then certainly they're going to have to do their homework and do. And at the same time, when once they start to look at things like you know the, ridic- the ridiculousness of the so-called gravitational constant and other things, or gravity, how poorly defined gravity is, really, what how uh, and how it, it, how uh, dishonest they're intellectually dishonest they are about the way they use it mm-hmm. in physics. Uh, you know, you know all that stuff. How could anyone object? How could anyone on Earth, <laughs> Earth, <laughs> I use that, how could anyone on Earth uh, be upset or object to the idea of a flat Earth movement? My Lord, now we're going to have school kids finally going back and doing their homework in, in math and science. What could be wrong with that? Yeah, well said. I mean, and to each person, they can believe whatever they want. I've said that many times. My problem is it certainly seems fishy that... We were taught these things that are fundamental truths, you know, these things that are absolute facts. They don't need to be questioned. They're scientific. They've been backed by evidence and years of study. And and they were taught to us at such a young age, put into the brains at such a formula of years that um, when you and then I went back and looked into it when I was 35 and expected to find the evidence right there, everything right there for me, because I said, well, this was taught so young. And so you're right. At the very least, what I hope comes out of this all is that. Uh, going forward, people question these things rather than just uh, accept them, because I believe that is the case when it comes to the ball Earth. I think that uh, the whole world just thinks we live on a ball, not because they've got any evidence, not because they've got proof, and also they think flat earthers are the dumbest creatures that ever walked the planet because they were taught that. You know, there's no other reason, because once you start doing the investigations that I've done and many others have done, that's kind of the biggest clue, is when you look into it, you say, hey, wait a second, why does this have some pretty good points? Why does this have some things that make sense, yet it was dismissed and talked about in such a negative way, and then the worst thing you can call somebody is a flat earther. In my opinion, that clearly tells me when one is taught as science and yet lacks evidence, and the other one is taught as stupidity, yet has credibility that it tells me that there's a deception at play does it mean that the earth is flat no but by no stretch does it mean it's flat but if it were round if it were a ball a sphere and flat earth was so ridiculous then this is something you do want to teach fifth and sixth graders maybe first grade isn't old enough maybe sixth seventh eighth graders somewhere around there you want to have a week where you spend teaching science in a way that says Here's the two options. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's the two hypotheses. The Earth is flat. The Earth is round. Now we're going to go through these tests. Now we're going to look into these things. And we're going to prove that one is clearly false and one is clearly true. The thing is, they never did that. Well, why did they not do that? Because they don't want you to even think about it. So I totally agree with you. I don't see why people have such a problem with what we're doing is we're questioning science, which is science. That is what science is. It's questioning the current most held belief it's trying to knock it off its perch and if it's true it will stand up to scrutiny it will stand up to questioning if it's false then it's going to fall and then the uh all the intelligent people in the world will get together and 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 build up the new truth and so that's really what i'm looking for so you you still at this point then believe that we live on a ball correct no no No? when i was in high school we had textbooks that were uh created under the aegis of John F. Kennedy's recent election. I I remember Sputnik, which is, of course, the birth of the geostationary orbit. This comes from the the Soviet science, the achievements of Soviet science, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Which were, rather than being derided as propaganda and lies and hoaxing at the time, Yuri Gagarin and Sputnik, 
they were acclaimed as great achievements internationally and then became the basis on which NASA was established. And John F. Kennedy's successful campaign uh, to, uh, to get elected because he promised that one of the first things he was going to do was pump millions of federal dollars. In those days, millions meant something. Millions of, nowadays, it would have to be billions. Millions of federal dollars into uh, our school elementary. In those days, they were called junior high schools, and now they're called middle schools, high schools, science, science. And we got all new textbooks. And in those textbooks were pictures of something called the asteroid belt we were told existed between Mars and Jupiter mm-hmm. and it was these these floating uh, pieces of rock or something and we were told well it was thought maybe this was a planet that had had been destroyed in some way or but it, one way or another and in this belt this asteroid belt they depicted asteroids and planetoids and an asteroid was an oblong, or if you will, flattened, if you will, object. It could be, I guess it could be defined as flat, although nothing is, co- I mean, when people say flat Earth, to me, that's a, that's a misuse of language in a way. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I, we're is. stuck with it, but I don't really like the language, because what do you mean, as flat as a sheet of paper, or how flat do you mean? I mean, if I start digging... How many miles down can I go? Correct, yeah. That's not right. There's there's definitely... Are you asking me, is there a bottom to that? Right. Yeah, how would I know? Right. It, it's that kind of thing. You know, you're you're into very, very basic questions about the uh, about cosmology. So, and, and what it's possible to measure, or what it's possible, or whether a falsifiable hypothesis can actually be created, and whether it's a nonsensical question, in, in other terms. But the thing is, NASA has provoked this, right? I mean, oh, asteroids. Yeah, asteroids essentially looked flattened, and planetoids were round. And the question was posed, would one of these pieces of this uh, busted-up planet or busted-up moon possibly be able to sustain an atmosphere that could support life? I remember this question being asked in, like, an eighth-grade science class. And this would have been in, nah, even earlier than that, maybe. It might have been like a sixth grade science class. Mm-hmm. Even in the early, maybe 1962, 63. John F. Kennedy had just been elected. And they said, why not? Because these planetoids look like little planets. Like they were round. They were, they were round, but the asteroids were flat. And I said, well, what about asteroids? And well, why not? You know, could the shape of an asteroid not sustain an atmosphere just like Earth? That question was posed. So the relative flatness or roundness of a planet became kind of a, 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 false, a, a false dichotomy, a false dualism, a false... It's neither absolutely flat nor absolutely round. Now, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when really cornered on this, said an oblate spheroid... He didn't say oblate spheroid. He said shaped like a pear. Is that right? Or like an egg. What did he say exactly? He said something... Yeah, it's a pear. Well, it's not... It's not perfectly spherical. Of course, when you walk into first grade in 1958-59, in the wake of the great achievement of the Soviet communists in launching Sputnik, um, which everyone supposedly could see in the sky as it went by, (laughs) you know, was it a balloon, you know? I could go into the duck and cover drills we had for the, for nuclear attacks. I could go into all that. I, I live I live to speak and bear witness to this because you're a new generation. You and yours are a new generation, and your new generation they're going to see sloppy. They're 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 already growing up. The young people now are already growing up in a world of digital effects that are so. I don't want to say authentic, but you know, so they are. They like really look. You can't. Right. You can't tell the difference anymore when you're looking at a green screen video. Do you mind if I ask you a question about uh, Kennedy? How old were you when that happened? Well, or about what age? I, I know when, you don't have when, to tell me your age. I was 12 years old, and he was shot. Do you do you remember? So the video, because from what we can tell, my generation, the video is a Pruder film that a lot of people base their opinions of that murder on. That film didn't come out for 
you know, about eight years to ten years after. I can tell you exactly when it came out. It came Please. out in 1968, 67, 68, in the wake of the Jim Garrison right. prosecution of Clay Shaw. And the, and the individual who first presented it publicly was Robert Grodin. It has a whole history. But at the time, indeed, there was this huge rock concert out there in California where David Crosby stood up and said, Hey, you guys, have you seen? Right there. It's like, and, and it was... Mont it was Monterey, and, and indeed a movie was made, Monterey Pop, mm -hmm. or Monterey, yeah, about this festival that was a, a best-selling movie. Everybody went to see it. Movies were a big deal in those days. Now movies aren't crap. But, um, and, but they edited out of this movie David Crosby, who at that time was with the, the birds, I think. <laughs> he stood up, and he said, hey, guys, have you seen that video? They shot the president from the front. It was a, you know, it was a hit. You know, they shot, he said they shot the president from the front, and uh, as and you know, you've heard. I think Jackson Brown said he was in the audience there when that was said, and it electrified people. And look, it was 1968. The, right. the country was exploding in rage. The streets were afire. Why should we believe anything they told us? I mean, it, the Zapruder film comes out. Well, it's a little five years, guys. Right. It's 1968. It, five, and you expect us to to take this at face value? So when you were watching I mean, the when you were watching the news, let's say that night or for the week or for the year after, was there no video evidence shown to people at that time? No, the first uh, actual photographic evidence that was shown were stills mm -hmm. extracted life life lie magazine you should take the f out and call it <laughs> lie <laughs> we actually we did that no. i have to tell you when i was at, when i was in college we did that that was we we hated time or life we knew slime magazine and lie magazine we knew they were propaganda all of this was known then so i'm here to apologize for a generation that no, that should have been, let me put it this way: I couldn't believe it when I watched my contemporaries roll over for 9/11, mm -hmm. and I live right up the road from where the Pentagon went down. I'm like 40, 45. I'm 45 minutes from the Pentagon, maybe an hour from the Pentagon. So you know, and everybody rolled over for it here. Half of them work down there. I said that's bullshit. I said, are you telling me a Boeing, a Boeing commercial jet? that was hijacked out of D.C., did a little loop-de-loop -loop up there in Ohio, and then came back, and NORAD couldn't... What are we paying for? Is somebody going to be cashiered? Is somebody going to be court-martialed? They all knew it was rotten. They all knew the official narrative was bullshit, and I watched it go down the very... in the very. Oh, God, I got home. I turned, turned on CNN to see, how are these generals? How is the Joint Chiefs of Staff going to explain? I figured they'd have Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld's head on a plate by dinner time, <laughs> for having allowed a big fat Boeing, not a Soviet MiG, you understand? Not a missile. Right, just a regular passenger jet. <laughs> a stupid fucking Boeing commercial jet that can't go but 450, who knows, 450, less than 500 miles per hour. Gonna, gonna cross the country across several, oh yeah, instead of hijacking it out of D.C. and just flying it directly into the Pentagon, they're gonna wait till it's over the Ohio Kentucky border and have to come all the way back three or four states, <laughs> evading NORAD and flying over air bases and nuclear plants and God knows what else. The whole narrative is so stupid. I said, there's no way they're going to get away with this. And then I watched it all go down. How yeah. do you think I felt? Yeah, How I can't even I imagine because, you know, we live nowhere near it. But, I mean, the biggest thing to me, and this is something I had to tell a family member that's actually an engineer who thought it was appalling that we were questioning 9-11. And I just asked him, you know, you're talking about the Pentagon. And I said, there's 20-something security cameras on the front of that building. Can you show me one security camera of this this plane hitting? And if you once once people realize that you can't that footage is not available, then they should have every question in the world. So anybody who just sits back and says, "Nope, the story that we're given is true," when you can see video footage of you know what looks like a hole in the front of the Pentagon, not a hole made by an airplane, but a hole made by some sort of missile or bomb, certainly not a a Boeing seven seventy seven. Um, you know that's where I just you know. If people are, are not going to, to see evidence when it's right there and not are, not are, they're not able to ask the questions that you should ask, like, wait a second, isn't this the most protected building in the United States, so wouldn't there be security cameras everywhere? Then just show us the video of this plane coming, and there is no video. And, you know, so, yeah, you're right. That once you see that, and, and you don't need to apologize for your, 
generation, I have often thought, you know, to myself, man, my parents' generation, they really missed the ball. But I, again, people don't expect to be lied to on such a high level. Now, my hope is that people look at that and look into it because they were fooled. And, and you can't, I just don't blame them because they thought the world that they lived in was what they were presented in school. They were told to get under their desks because the nukes were coming. They were presented these video uh, montages that act, that look like they're for the betterment of people and to explain, well, this is what we do when this nuke might hit us. This is how we protect ourselves. This is, how, I just, I, if I was back then, I certainly wouldn't have asked questions because even after all that, I didn't ask questions in school. I just, um, I thought we're all here to learn the truth. The lady at the front is there to, to present it. We learn it. We memorize it. And that's how the world gets better because we're all so much smarter. You know, now I look back and I say, no, that's, that's bullshit. We all needed to question everything we were taught. And you don't want to teach children that way. You want to teach them to have open minds. You want them to explore different possibilities. There isn't one answer to any one question. And so you don't want to teach it that way. The fact that science is taught as yes or no, true or false in, in schools is a ridiculous joke. Um, you know, of course, why do we have cars that run on gas right now? Because we tell children that cars run on gas. You know, why would anybody go looking into if they can create something that runs off water or something that can run off seawater or anything like that? They, would, they wouldn't even think to do so because they're not taught that that's a possibility. So to me, I don't think you need to apologize. Um, but speaking out now like you're doing is is the best thing we can do going forward. And I try to never apologize much for the past because we can't change it, right? I mean, nothing that happened in the past is going to change. So all we can do is just better equip ourselves and others to uh, attack the future. And I think we need to do it with a questioning mind. When you hear something like this happens in Manchester with the bombing, if you need to immediately think, wait a second now, does this have all the signs of these other things we've seen? And the first thing I looked up was, was there a drill somewhere in the area around the same time? And I found out there was a drill the week before in the same city. And this is the same thing that happened with San Bernardino, which was the same day there was a drill in the, you know, a, a, a armed shooter drill or a active shooter drill. And the same thing. They had a, a bomb, a bombing drill a week before in Manchester. And, you know, these kind of things should tell people that uh, they need to, to really look at these things because we've got a group of governments that don't give a damn about the people. It's all about gaining more power, enslaving those who are dumb enough to be enslaved, and I don't want to be included in that group anymore. I'm sure a lot of those people are cowering in fear because deep down inside they've known all along that it was mobbed up. They've known all along that, it was, that it's gangstered mm -hmm. and, and that the media itself is being used to uh, gaslight. Oh, that's population. the biggest thing, yeah. Hey, I appreciate the call. I wanted to give it open for a few more just so I don't just take two yeah. for the night. appreciate that. But you're absolutely right about media. That is their number one tool, and it's the number one thing that, um, you know, people can't, um, can't get around, that the news is not there to tell you the truth. The news is a propaganda piece, and that's the government was the smartest they ever been when they said, hey, if we infiltrate the media, guys, the lines are open. Uh, hopefully the screen's still up. I don't know. 562-735 flat. I'll take a few more if anybody wants to call. Again, that's 562-735 flat. Um, but anyway, the media absolutely controls the minds of uh, the American public and the world. You're on with Jaronism. What's up? Oops. Try that again. Oops. Maybe I shouldn't hit the big red button that has the phone hanging up on it. You're on with Jaronism. What's going on? That is their number one Yeah. Tool. Just want to uh, talk to them about the stuff. Huh? Yeah. Hi, Jaronism. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. I think you have your, your the show on in the background. Can you turn it off for me? Because it's delayed. Oh, oh, you're on. You're actually on. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Hi. Hello. Yeah, you know, uh, a few days ago, what you talk about... I really appreciate your whole, everything you're doing. I mean, it's it's really uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm calling from Hawaii. I got into this whole lying thing um, back in the late '60s when I realized they were poisoning all the food, and I kind of started doing my own agricultural thing and realized everything they were telling was a lie. And I still can't believe that people eat poison. But um, I think what you're tapping into and, I, and you did a small video of it because I was talking to my friends about this a month ago two months ago and then I saw one of your videos 
is that I have a feeling that the flat earth is the reason that people get killed. I think the, I think the whole Federal Reserve about Kennedy is just a deflection from reality because when I also look at some of the things he talked about, his mistake about wanting to go to the moon, you know, during his candidacy and all that, a, a year or two later, he expressed regret about that because he saw the money hole that it was going to create. And I have a feeling that he was trying to fi- figure out how he could do flat earth. And I think that's why they killed him. And I think that's the blackmail that's happening all over the planet. Every, every government is bought into it. I mean, I don't think there's a government uh, existing right now that wouldn't come down. If it was fully revealed, I mean, I agree. Yeah, that's you're, why you're I think it's something that's absolutely uh, unbelievable, you know. And uh, and I'm I'm, I'm a, I can't say I'm a flat earther. I, I I just don't know what to believe anymore. Right. Really, do we really believe in a realm? And I think there's interdimensional aspects to it. Um, I don't know if it's an infinite plane. I don't know if it's flat. I don't know. I don't know any of those things. But I know it's not a globe, and I know NASA's been lying to us, and I know we're being controlled. And I, I get in arguments with people, and I, I can't even I can't even talk to people until I ask them, can they get off the chemicals for a couple of months <laughs> and start eating organic food? So I really do believe we're dealing with really a, a you know, I'm 70 years old now, and so I, you know, I've seen all these things going on, and it's just like absolutely unbelievable what. Um, how we've been lied to at every level. I mean, I, I've researched it. I've researched the agricultural thing since the 50s and, and, and how they uh, went back and forth between subsidies and not subsidies and changing the prices and the Federal Reserve and how they've reduced our, you know, the money, su- they've increased the money supply and reduced the money velocity in a way uh, using agricultural products to get everybody completely in debt. And I, and I really do believe that, that we are at the brink here and I, I, I honestly believe I give you a lot of credit for bringing this to this level I, you know you're um, I see you get angry sometimes you know I, I see, and, and, I, and I feel bad when you do because cause it's, I think it's your uh, stability and your ability to remain logical is, is the greatest stuff. well thank you I appreciate that and I uh, yeah I try to keep my cool as best as possible it gets frustrating and I, the one thing I've learned recently is I just got to probably give up on trying to convince people that uh, don't want to don't want to see it. And I think that's something I've just learned recently that I don't really think anybody has ever turned anybody. I've had a lot of emails from people who said, hey, I thought you were a joke. I laughed at you. I watched your videos. Then I thought about it at work for a week and then I watched some more. And then before you know it, I came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, you might be right. I've had a lot of those kind of emails, but I've never had anybody who has been the kind of person like a Red's Rhetoric or somebody who has made a point to keep going into comment sections or to keep attacking or to make videos. I just think those people have gone too far to ever to ever realize the truth. They're, they're not going to find it. And I think sometimes I do too much work at trying to convince those people, and that's just not going to happen. Either you, Either you see this or you don't. Either you can look at everything we're shown from planets to pictures of the earth to the ISS footage and you can say well none of this stuff um, looks real or contains the element that would uh, be needed to be called a fact and for for somebody like NASA who has um, been questioned about the moon landing for 50 years for them to have never done anything further than to fly their LRO 50 miles above it and show a little pixel and a little arrow at it saying here's our proof that to me is all the proof I need. If you're a scientific entity and people are out there questioning whether or not you went to the moon, you get $52 million a day. Then go prove it. Go. Pu- I mean, people still question, what is the lunar eclipse? Go put a camera on the moon. Put a camera on the moon. Right. We'll see the Earth get moved right into the way of the sun. It'll all be right there for us to see. And you can't tell me that that costs a lot of money because we already know what a, a launch costs. It doesn't cost, I mean, it costs a lot for our terms, but... As far as for NASA, it's simply not a lot of money. And if they ever needed money to do something like that, you're telling me you're going to launch a rocket to the moon and it's going to land there and show a camera footage of a lunar eclipse. You could have Pepsi, Coke, Depends, diapers, Pampers. I mean, all these companies would put their logo on that video. It would be done. You'd make money off of it. But they don't do it. No, you're absolutely right. You know, it's like I, I didn't really even start thinking about the moon uh, landing until about 20 years ago, and I was working with this guy, John Craven, who, um, through his own books and through the people that came to our facility over here in Hawaii, he was doing an agricultural thing over here in Hawaii. 
If you get drunk and tell me he was the lead CIA scientist on, on the Polaris missile program, he basically told me that they never worked. And that the whole Anuitox explosions and all the, the the cruise missile shots they did were all a lie, and Russia was in on it completely. Everybody was in on it. He said, and yeah, it was it has just, to be. Yeah. and they didn't get it. Get, and he said they didn't get those missiles really to work until the Clinton administration. And it was during uh, I was working with him, and he was getting drunk one morning watching Bosnia and all, and getting blown apart by all the cruise missiles, and they were showing missile destroyers. And, and cruise missile launchings going out of the Mediterranean. He said, no, that's bullshit. He said, they're coming. They, they got the Polaris. He was crying. He said, they got the Polaris finally working. He said, they finally put up enough, enough whatever, repeater stations or whatever it is back then. He said, it was satellites, but, but it was like it was probably repeater stations. Mm-hmm. And they got it, that, that technology to work, and they blew the crap out of uh, Europe. And, and he was crying because... He actually believed he was the Antichrist. He carried around his phone numbers were all 666. He said everyone that worked on the Fleur Simple program believed they were in the Antichrist because if they thought they could get it to work, and it never did work, that they were going to annihilate Russia and bring, and bring Jesus back to Earth. I mean, we, this is what these guys actually believe at the top level. Mm-hmm. They believe that, 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 I mean, it was scary when, when I finally started realizing that these guys thought they were doing god's work by bringing about the end of mankind so jesus could come back their 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 imagination of what jesus is but but the forces and i really started looking at everything at that point and the first thing i started realizing was the the people that are in control are just completely bluffing us these are really terrible horrible removed people and it's uh and they're poisoning us the food uh, it's just unbelievable that people allow this to happen it's just it's so critically important that people start eating uh, organic food that's grown locally. I mean, I mean, obviously the international, the, the Chinese food and the turkey food and all that they say is organic is all is all BS. So it's just a question of you got to know where your food's coming from and, and, and stop worrying about getting food from all over the world because we're just which we're destroying this planet or not, whatever you want to call it this this realm. <laughs> you can call it a planet. Um, the plane, right? Drop the T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your call, and I actually think that what you're saying is hugely important. I wish more people would, uh, you know, go to the farmers markets, meet these guys that are out there growing the food, and, and make friendships with them, and figure out what it is that you are eating, and make sure that it's healthy and that it's grown the right way, and that we're using the right seeds. and And just to kind of follow up real quick, and then I'll open up the calls again. But just to follow up on what you said about the evil at the top here's why it's so hard for people to believe because you can look around at your 50 friends or your 100 acquaintances and you see that they're generally good people and so it's hard to picture well how could you have this elite group or this government entities that are so wicked it's not even possible numerically how they could be that way but really when you look at it and you understand that basically you don't get to the top unless you are the wicked and the crooked and that's the way they funnel it out. That if you dare try to get to the top and you uh, are a good person, well, those are the people that get forced out, they get killed, they get off, they get removed. And what settles at the top is the dirt bags and dirt balls, if you will, for the you know name of this show. But what's really going on is that it's the same way with companies. I saw it happen with Long's Drugs, a fantastic. Uh, family-owned run drugstore out of California, Hawaii, and I think they were also in Arizona for a little while. Great little drugstore. Uh, cared about its employees, cared about its customers, did things right. Um, I loved working for them. And then we were taken over by CVS. And um, CVS is a wicked uh, corporation that does not care about uh, employees, that does not care about um, its customers. Uh, you know, I've told the story many times before. We had signs that we put on our ad items that say buy one get one 50 percent off but the buy one um and it says buy one get one it was in the tiniest eight point font on the signs and then it would say 50 percent off so every day i would spend a majority of my day at the check stand arguing with customers who wanted to tell me i thought this item was 50 percent off and i'd say yeah i can understand yeah the writing's a little small i'd say but it says buy one get one and he's what's so tiny can you call and tell them to change it well, little did they know, every day I would call and try and tell them, and they would say, nope, we've done studies, and they show that this sells more. I said, of course it sells more. You're lying to the customer. 
Of course it sells more product. What are you talking about? So I just learned real quick and that's why I quit my slave job. And for all those that have a problem that, hey, Jaron's got this bit.ly dot, uh, Jaron tip on the top. He's, he's trying to make money from this. Well, would you rather I go back and work for CVS and lie to your face? That's what people want. People are happy when you're doing those kind of things. When you sell out for companies, when you uh, will screw employees over. When I got hired there, we had 20 year cash, or not hired there. When I got, when we moved over, um, I had 20 year cashiers that were making like $14 an hour, $15, great cashiers, great workers. They were uh, on time every day. The customers knew them and we were told that they, we, they needed to be paid less or let, let go. And I was like, no, 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 I, I understand we can hire people at $8, but this person is worth more than me than two $8 employees. And they would say, no, it doesn't matter if somebody has been here that long and they're making that kind of money, you need to tell them that they need to be working towards being a store manager or they need to go. And I mean, that's the kind of thing you were told and it just turned me into a terrible person. I didn't want to show up at work anymore and have to do the things I was being asked to do. Just didn't make any sense. Um, but basically all these corporations, if you're a big corporation, it's because you are able to screw people. You're able to uh, be dirt balls about everything. And so that's what we need to be aware of is that when you see these companies at the very top, I mean, yeah, mo monopolies are illegal. We know that, okay? So you can't have one company that runs all the phone lines. But believe me, the government loves that there's three companies that runs the four lines, I mean, the phone lines, because those three companies are the ones that are willing to do whatever the government tells them, give us these people's information, give us this, give it that, and these people are willing to go along with it because if they weren't, they wouldn't be where they are. That if they weren't, then they'd be the companies that we saw come and go. These uh, phone companies that just kind of go by the wayside. Well, it's because they weren't willing to sell out people for profits. But you know what? For every 10,000 people, there's one person that will do anything for money. And that's all you need to realize. And so when you look at a country of 350 million people, it's not hard to imagine that we've got 350,000 that will do anything to be rich, to be powerful, to have control over you. They don't care if it's lying to your face. And then when you expand that to the world, then all of a sudden you can see where everybody at the top of every country is all in on it together. There was no space race. There was no Cold War. These things are, are, are lies. They're meant, if there was a war, why has nobody ever dropped a bomb on the White House? Why have we never bombed the Kremlin? Why? These things don't happen. They fight out in fields. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's meant to, um, it's meant to, to, to fool you, play on your heartstrings. They're, they're, and they're great at it. They know exactly what you want to hear on the news that makes you feel bad. As soon as there's one of these false flag attacks, they're going to put a mother on there that's going to tell you about her son or daughter that passed away because there's no human being that can sit at their house and not see that and feel bad. And then when you go to work and somebody questions it the next day, you how dare you? How dare you question these people? What do you think, that mother's lying? Well, guess what? That's one out of the 10,000 people that's a dirtbag that was willing to take a million dollars to get on TV and lie to you. And if you don't think that's possible, uh, try leaving a you know five hundred dollars in in cash on your you know your coffee table and have a party. Invite all your best friends over, and at the end of that party, tell me if that five hundred dollars is still there. And I'll bet you it's not, because at some point in that party, somebody would take advantage of it and steal it. And it may not be your best friend. It may not be somebody you know very well, but somebody in that party is willing to do something for five hundred dollars. Now, when you say put a million dollars there, put five million and tell people that nobody would know if they stole it well then the list gets bigger and bigger about the people that will do anything to uh screw you over so totally agree uh let's see if we can take one or two more phone lines are open again so give me a call sorry i like to talk too much i know i should just take calls but uh yeah i hope to be doing these shows a lot and you know at least once a week i'll do a show where i just take calls that was the plan for today until i saw that video and then also saw some tweets about the uh Chinese Moonlander. So, what's up? You're on with journalism. I'm on. You are on the line. Can you turn off that uh, the show behind you? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like to okay, hear myself. Uh, I'm, uh, Jaren. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. Um, I'm curious about your thoughts on evolution and specifically single origin theory. Okay. What is? What do you mean, single origin theory? Single origin theory is basically that all life forms on the planet are genetically related. Um, yeah, well, okay, thank you. Do you want to take it off the air or do you have another question after? 
No, that, that's fine. Okay, thanks. Appreciate the call. Um, yeah, so evolution is the probably the biggest joke science that there ever was. Um, single origin theory, well, if you're talking about us all being genetically connected, well, of course, that uh, the makeups, you know, the, the parts that make us up are all the same, that uh, it's not like some of these things were used on this and some of these things were used on that, that we're all made up of this general, the same building blocks. Uh, does it mean that we all came from the same one, you know, one bacteria or whatever you want to say that we came from? The, the whole idea of um, coming from, you know, one-celled organisms or... Uh, it, no, I don't think that that's at all scientific. I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, they try and sell it on the whole idea of billions of years or as Richard Dawkins says, millions of millions of years and millions of billions of years. No. You have to remember, they, they try and tell you that dinosaurs died 67 million years ago and nothing survived bigger than a hamster or a mole rat or something. So then you have to believe that in only 67 million years that an animal like a mole rat evolved into the humans that we see today. And then you have to ask somebody, okay, so based on that, will an animal like a hamster today, uh, 67 million years from now, will be evolved to the point where they'll be designing... Uh, jet craft and be flying to the top of the atmosphere and be designing computer systems where you can issue tickets to people on a uh, jet airliners that fly across the world. No, absolutely not. I don't think that that's at all possible. And their excuse for that is always, well, those people don't need to evolve now or those things don't need to evolve now. It's just all nonsense. I think that uh, it's one of the biggest tricks of, of science. And I think you know, I, I probably would have never opened my eyes to what science is if it wasn't for their two dogmatic, absolute horseshit beliefs. One of them being evolution, the other one being the moon landings, that you have to believe in those things to be considered intellectual, to be smart, to be scientific. And that tells me that they're a religion. They're not about what they say they are. If they are scientific, then they would allow questioning and they don't allow it. If you're a teacher and you question evolution, you'll lose your job. Okay, you're not allowed to question it. You will be out on the streets. Goodbye. If you even think about, well, we should teach both things, you know, creation. And I'm not a person that believes in, quote unquote, uh, creationism either. Um, you know, I, I don't think that it just worked the way that we're told. But the stories that are told in the Bible and other such books, uh, the Quran, all those books are told uh, metaphorically. They're, they're meant to convey something that humans can't really digest or comprehend um, same thing with God. I think that God is a is an idea that we couldn't possibly um, rationalize with our with our minds. We couldn't possibly understand the mind or the spirit or the mechanism that put all this into play. And so to try and uh, write it down in a book and tell other people about it is a little bit questionable in my mind. Now, did they write it as a way of saying, hey, we're going to try and convey what we think, what might have happened? And is it a generally an okay story for them to tell? Sure. Um, but I think when people start believing that stuff, it's the same as the people who believe evolution and just can't explain it. They, they don't want to explain it. They'll tell you, all the evidence is right there. Go look it up. We changed these house flies or horse flies or bat flies or whatever, fruit flies. Uh, we changed these fruit flies. And we'll say, yeah, humans changed this species. And what happened to the fruit flies? They immediately all died because you had um, you know, put a detriment in their... Uh, in their makeup. And that's not what evolution should be, right? Evolution should be the uh, gaining of knowledge and the gaining of attributes. And that we can't even do that. We've never shown it. We've never seen one species change to another species. Um, so I don't think it happened. Now, where did everything come from? Phew, geez, you got me. I have no idea. Uh, but it certainly seems to me that um, things were made after their kind and that's kind of what we get now. So do people evolve? Yeah. That's the crazy word about that's the crazy thing about that word, evolution. Things evolve. Absolutely. Things evolve, they get better, they they adapt to their situation, to their circumstances, to their environment. That's just a uh, an adaptation, but uh, to think that we we evolve, I mean, let's picture, let's look at all the humans that are here now. Let's say that somebody evolves or whatever happens that we're going to become a new species. Well, nobody can explain that even. So it happened throughout all of history that we went through this whole progression of moving from, you know, species to species to new species, break off species, a side species, and then we get to humans, and now all of a sudden nobody can explain how that would even happen. 
What if some girl in China was born and she's evolved to a new species? Well, guess what? She needs to somehow find the other human being that's a male that's her same age that also has evolved so that they can have a child that evolves, I mean, that is evolved in a new species, but then that one needs to find somebody who's also evolved. This doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, even looking back, look at Darwin. You know, Darwin, who's the inventor of the theory, and where does this tie in with Flat Earth, too? Believe it or not, there is a tie-in, because if you look up who is Darwin's right-hand man, in fact, the person that many people would say were more responsible for evolution than Darwin, and um, that is uh, Alfred Wallace, Alfred Russell Wallace. And the reason that he is not talked about anymore is because he made, in the Glober's opinion, the fatal mistake of getting involved in the Bedford Level experiment with John Hampton. He's the one who uh, technically, according to the to the judges at the time, won the bet, and his life became a living hell because John Hampton uh, basically threatened him and his wife and made a big mess out of it. And Wallace, who was an evolutionist and basically came up with the theory, him along with uh, Darwin, uh, he they just erased him. They kind of wanted to ignore him. They didn't want people to see that he had gotten involved in the flat Earth. Uh, conversation and debate and this is uh, one of the signs that that tells me that you know this is why they do these things this is why they erased him and propelled Darwin up to the name that he is now and Darwin even said that to absolutely believe that you know the eye was from evolution is uh, is a really thing uh, impossible thing to believe and it's far-fetched and yet people want to keep uh, believing it just because Richard Dawkins likes to walk around and say that it happened and it's a fact and I've got videos showing you where Lawrence Krauss will say, the great thing about science is that we don't find the truth and we don't ever say we have the truth. We don't ever say things are true. Not more than a sentence later, he's talking about evolution. And he said, evolution is a fact. There's no debating, no discussion, no nothing. It happened, get over it. And there's people that think the earth is 10,000 years old and what a joke they are and blah, blah, blah. And they just, it's like, dude, did you just hear yourself? You said science doesn't say things are true or that we don't ever reach a consensus. And yet you just said in the next sentence that evolution can't be debated. And that is the opposite of science. That is religion. Okay, religion, let's look at, um, you know, let's look at Muslims and the fact that Muhammad was a prophet. If they say that, then it's something that cannot be debated, right? There's nobody who's a Muslim who's debating whether or not um, Muhammad was the last prophet because it is a dogmatic, staple, foundational belief that you need to have to be a Muslim. So the same thing is true about science. They have their dogmatic beliefs in Einstein, in relativity, in the Big Bang, in the sphere Earth, in gravity, in Newton. And if you don't believe those things, then you cannot be part of the club. That, again, is religion. It's not science. And again, you can listen to Joe Rogan who says, well, you know, I believe in the moon landings now because I'm not smart enough to debate that. We have to leave that to people smarter than us, and the people smarter than us say that it happened. Therefore, it must have happened. But if he believes that, then he has to also believe in every religion because he's not smart enough to debate about Christianity. He's not smart enough to question Islam. He's not smart enough to question Seventh-day Adventists because those people that went to school, theologians, you know, to be a priest, you have to go to school for... I know, at least two years in the seminary and come out of college. So those people have put years of study into the belief in Christianity. So who are we to question Christianity, right? We, we shouldn't be able to question it because those people have put years... That's what he's saying about science, is that Neil deGrasse has put in years studying astrology, or sorry, astronomy. Therefore, it must be true, and we should just uh, bow down to their, their beliefs. So phone lines are open again. Take another... What time is it? 11? Uh, I'll take another one or two. So, uh, again, phone number is... Making sure I still have it up. Uh, 1-562-735-FLAT. And see if the phones ring. And we'll take another one or two. So, let me know in the comments after the show, too, if you enjoy this, this uh, format or layout. And then also... Uh, let me know if there's something else you want to see on a weekly show. I always have so much to talk about, you know me, so I'll uh, just talk if I have to. But uh, I'm also open to different ideas, panel show, whatever. You're on with Jaren. What's up? Hey, Jaren. How are you doing? Good. Yourself? Uh, good, thanks. Good. Uh, 
catch all your shows. You and Bob, you guys are great. Love you guys, man. Thanks. Um, I had a couple couple questions here. Um, I'll ask them and then uh, hang up and you can talk about them or whatever. Okay, appreciate that. Um, the first one is, uh, what are your what are your thoughts on the uh, the mid eighties Challenger explosion, and whether or not the astronauts are still alive? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And um, the second one being, uh, what are your thoughts on Eddie Bravo and Joe Rogan and their relationship, and from the time when like you could see when Joe Rogan flipped when he you know used to be against NASA to what's going on with him today and uh, you know the whole Eddie Bravo thing and how we could possibly maybe get him interviewed on here some somehow some way and uh, you know because he's got some fame so might awesome. help the movement a little bit um, so yeah all your thoughts on that okay uh, thanks for taking my call hey appreciate you calling in um, yep, I, thank you I definitely think that uh I would love to talk to Joe Rogan. Joe, if you're out there, let's have a, a little conversation. Um, I, here's my feeling on Joe Rogan, and it's kind of a split one, is we've seen him definitely look like a, a sellout. He's made the comment that he would lie if given the opportunity, he would lie to his mother as long as they showed him real uh, UFOs. Um, but I think there's something to be said for the fact that he's continued to bring it up on his show. And there was one moment where I thought it was really interesting he was having a conversation with Eddie Bravo. They were. It was during the Flat Earth show, and maybe somebody will bring this video up and, and find this part. I'm actually. I have a video that's about half done that was talking about this. But at one point, uh, they're talking about something, and Eddie Bravo says, "All right, all right, whatever. All right, whatever." And Joe, he was kind of like letting that point go, and Joe made a point to say, "No, Eddie, Eddie, don't let this go. Listen to me. Why would somebody lie about the Earth being flat? Why?" And I thought it was interesting because. He could, he he. Joe had defeated you know Eddie Bravo at that point. Eddie had said, "All right, whatever, whatever, whatever," and he could have just said, "Well, see, I told you." And but he didn't. He said, "No, Eddie, don't let this go. Listen to me. Why are they lying? Why would somebody lie about the Earth being flat?" So I thought it was interesting that could it be that he's um, doing it in his own way of getting this into people's minds, getting people to go research it. Yeah, he's coming across as it's very dumb. Do I agree with the methodology? No. Um, but I, I do think I, I have this little little hope that, there, you know, you can't really be mad at the guy just because he's putting it into people's minds. And that's what I was trying to do. You know, I just want people to look into it. Um, if they look into it, they watch the ISS, they watch all this footage, and they still come to the conclusion that they live on a ball and that there's no reason to question any of it, they, to each their own. Um, I think that when people, the difference between me five years ago and now is that I was given the the ability to question things I thought couldn't be questioned before, didn't need to be questioned. And that was all the difference it needed. Once I opened my mind to that and started looking into these things, I realized that I was deceived. So I think other people, and I've gotten emails by the hundreds, and people who have gone through the same thing, that uh, they fought it, they fought it, they thought it was ridiculous. But once you allow yourself to start looking into it, the, the truth opens up to you. So as far as their relationship, I do think it's interesting, and somebody can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think since that Flat Earth show that Eddie has been back on Joe's show. So I guess I'll hold out judgment for now because I want to see, is this somebody he brings back, or now does he think Eddie's so ridiculous that um, he doesn't have him on the show anymore? But as far as Eddie Bravo goes, I give him huge ups. Um... I can just tell when somebody has done even the first part of the research, and Eddie Bravo is one of those people. You don't, you can't repeat things like Michelson Morley. You can't bring up things like Aries failure. You can't uh, say some of the things he said without looking into it. It's just not possible. Um, you have to. I mean, you know, think of if you asked Eddie Bravo what's the curvature formula, he would know. And if you ask um, any flat earther what's the curvature formula, they'll know. And when Joe Rogan asked Neil deGrasse Tyson what the curvature formula was, he didn't have a clue. That's huge. That tells me the kind of person that has never looked into this, the person that simply believes the religion he was, um, he grew up to believe or that he studied to believe, he wouldn't dare question, why would you even need to know the curvature formula if you've already decided that the Earth is a ball? It doesn't matter what the curvature formula is. Why would I care? That's what his opinion is. 
As far as Challenger goes, gee, personally, I think I would love to interview, you know, uh, Judith Resnick over there at Yale and, um, you know, the other members um, of that group. I think there's a lot of questions when it comes to Challenger. I've talked to people that said that they remember out of all the launches that they made a big deal to take children out of the classrooms and put them in the gymnasium with all their friends to watch this particular launch. And everybody's eyes were focused on it. I think amazing things can be done with uh, hypnotism. So you put those astronauts in a <laughs> hypnotized state or something and you get a, you, you wipe that whole memory out and they don't remember that. I don't know. It certainly seems far-fetched, but then again, if you think that, okay, let's say um, your father, okay, so if everybody does this as a test, take your father and with his name, which I don't know how popular your father's name is, um, but go and search the internet and try and find somebody with the same name that is the same age that has the resemblance that Judith Resnick has with her dead counterpart or that um you know the other ones do uh you know th i don't think you'll find it and that's what i originally thought as i said you know what maybe this is just a case of mistaken identity but once you find out where they work how they're all connected um that they're in the same industries then you just have to question like wait a second this doesn't seem to make any sense and then i don't know if you've ever seen if you go to um and i can't remember his name right now let me think it's he's got this new he's the ceo of a company and uh, if I can think of his name, um, which one it is, I'm trying to think. It's not Scobie, because there's Dick Scobie, then there's Ronald McNair, um, Ozuka, or Onizuka was the other guy. I can't remember the guy's name that was the, um, yeah, I can't remember, uh, Michael J. Smith. Who was the guy that has the company? I'm going to check the chat. Maybe somebody knows who I'm talking about. There was Jarvis. Oh, I think it was Michael Smith. I think it was him. Um, oh, no, it's Dick Scobie. Now I'm picturing it. Yeah, Dick Scobie. Okay, Richard Scobie. He's got a company. Let me see if I can find it on a search here. Richard Scobie's got this company now where the when you get to the page of the website, it's a cow that's flying around making the same smoke that the Challenger made. Pretty crazy. I mean, what, what are the chances of that? Um, let me see if I can find his company here real quick. And if somebody in the chat, I'm going to check the chat. Does somebody know the name of that company? offhand let me check that real quick and see if anybody's got that anybody know the name of that company um god what is the name of it let me see if i can find it here richard scobie see it's hard to search because i'm finding the other one richard scobie uh company because he's ceo of something now there it is ceo cows and trees i'm going to bring this up so you can see it too uh richard scobie ceo cows and trees and it's just really, I mean, it's one of those things. Is this a coincidence? I, I can't see it as being a coincidence. I just can't. Uh, let me see where it is. Let me find it for you. Um, why can't I find this? Cows and Trees. Is this Fellowship of the Minds? Oh, here's a company, marketing company called Cows and Trees. Let me find the website for you. And, okay, one second. Cows and Trees. Let me see, does this take me to the page? I don't want to get there and not be showing you. Let me get over here quick in case you have to miss it. And where's my... Come on. I don't want to miss this. Where are we at? Browser. Oh, great. That wasn't it. I got to a Apache server thing. Let me see if it's just cows and trees. One second. We'll try... Oh, chat cows and trees. Don't tell me it's gone now. Luckily, I actually have a video of it somewhere. Cows and trees. I'm getting service temporarily unavailable. Was that the name of it? Cows in Trees video. Let me see if anybody had it on YouTube or anything. Um, I'll have to put out a video of it. Basically what it is, is it's like a cow flying away, but it's like the smoke that the cow is making is the same smoke the Challenger video made. Uh, let me see here if I can find that for you. Richard Scobie. Sorry to do this live, but that's what sometimes happens. Uh, let's see here. We'll look at videos and see if I can find it. Somebody has to have it. I know I taped it or videoed it at some point. Let me see if we can find it. This is a video. Cows and trees. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? I don't know if I even have this up. Let me check. Make sure you're watching. Yeah, you are. Okay. Let's see if it's in here. I'm going to turn down this volume just so I don't get copyright. Let me see here. So we're going forward. This is showing... So this is an interesting video. It's not in English, but um, 
So it's going through each of the... Okay, so let's see here. They're going to show it? They It was in the uh, description, cows and trees. Yeah, but this is talking about each one. You'll see the resemblance here. And then McNair, I mean, this one's just the biggest joke ever because McNair, who there's no registered um, birth index of his twin brother, yet Ronald McNair died and his twin brother, Carl McNair, went forward and became a teacher and all that stuff. And let me go forward a little bit. This is... Ozuka, who the same thing happened. He has a twin brother who wasn't around before. It certainly doesn't seem like. Okay, maybe I missed it already. Let me see. Hmm. This is... Sorry, I can't read it, so I don't know what they're talking about here. I don't know. It's important for you to see, though. That's why I'm showing you, because it's kind of the biggest evidence I've seen that uh, tells me... Yeah, this guy, Scobie. Hmm. Let me check forward in the video. Damn, if anybody knows or has a link to that, uh, basically it's just his video. I wonder why they would put cows and trees in the description if they weren't going to show the video. And that's crazy. That's even more evidence, if you ask me, if the site is no longer up. It was a marketing company. And there it is. Watch this. Watch this. And it just is awfully weird that this would be, and this is like when you get to his site, um, and it says he has a LinkedIn. When you get to the site, this is what you see. This cow. I mean, to me, even if, if your name was the same, let's say my name is Judith Resnick, and I'm thinking of building a website, and I'm going to put up a, a video at the beginning. I, you don't think I'm going to think about the fact that I've just made a video with a rocket strapped to the back of a cow that is going to basically show the same thing that happened to those people? It just doesn't seem like something that would ever happen um, unless people are rubbing something in your face, which is why they do all this stuff. It's meant to rub in your face. So, yeah, if you ask me, you know, can, can I prove it? No. Do I think that Judith Resnick is this same Judith Resnick? They teach the same subjects. They're both at Yale. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous to me. It just is too obvious. They've looked at her hands. A lot of people have done comparisons. I just don't think there's somebody who would have the same name and another thing, Resnick spelled R-E-S-N-I-K. Most people sp spell Resnick R-E-S-N-I-C-K. So this is just another thing. Um, and, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever asked her. Again, I'm not saying go and do what we saw in that video earlier. Certainly do not go to Yale and run up to her and say, you pretended to die in the Challenger. Don't do that. That's not the way to do it. But if anybody can get an interview with this, Judith Resnick, the teacher, and ask her some questions about what she was doing at the time, where she went to, you know, kindergarten, where she went to, hey, that's something I think definitely somebody needs to do because she just is teaching and it looks like she's identical to this girl. It doesn't look like there's any chance. And then this one here, that was Krista McAulfee and comes back as Sharon McAulfee when that was actually Krista McAulfee's real name. Her name was Sharon Krista McAulfee. She went by Krista McAulfee and then this girl now, who looks, again, nearly identical, is Sharon McAulfee. So, just really interesting stuff that, um, again, I don't like to uh, diminish death if somebody died in an accident that NASA caused. Well, I feel bad for them and their family. But if somebody didn't die and it was all a big hoax, which certainly looks to me to be my opinion, uh, then I think they absolutely need to be outed and called dirt balls because that's what they are. So, um, let's get back to take another call. And then, what are we at? Yeah, by 1130 we got to be done. So, maybe one or two more. And people don't like long shows. So if you're wondering why I'm cutting it short, they hate me when I put out a long show. They always tell me, your shows are too long. I can't listen to the whole thing. So I try and cut them short. So phone lines are open, 562, forgot the other part, 735 flat. It's 562-735-FLAT. Another one or two calls. Real quick, I did want to um, say to Orphan Red, who uh, had a question last night about me saying that the Indians believed... Um, you know, around the Bhagavad Gita and those kind of books, that the pole star was the same pole star that's there now. So I'll comment down that before I end the call. Uh, yeah, you're on with Jaren. Oh, geez. Turn that off, please. Hello, Jaren? Yeah, what's up? Hi, Jaren. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm glad to get there. My name is David. What's up, David? I've been watching your documentaries for a couple months now, man. Really blowing my mind. 
thought there was never going to be a conspiracy that could really uh, make me freak out like that. Actually, <laughs> but it's but it's all good now. I really I, I'm pretty pretty darn convinced. I know we all live on a ball. Do and you, if you look, I thought there was so much proof of of the ball. I'm like, these guys are crazy. There's no way, no way in hell. I'm going to debunk this in a few minutes. And then by the end of the day, I watched probably 10, 12 hours of videos. Yep. We all went and, through the and, same you know, thing. It yeah. just, it, it, the thing I wanted to ask you about is the, the, the creator and, the, and you know, the religion that we have in this world now and how, you know, how do we kind of square those two because I've been more or less atheist my whole life thinking, you know, religion's crazy and ridiculous and doesn't make sense. And, but, and now I think that's probably stupid and naive of me to think that, but I also don't believe like Jesus Christ was the savior. And I like where you put it, like, why would God sacrifice himself to himself? Right. Yeah. You know, like that a... doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that can't be true. So I wonder what, what your take is like about what the religious kind of, uh, you know, what possibilities, I don't know, the possibilities of what could be possible aside from the religion we're given, you know what I mean? All right, well, I appreciate the call. I'll be happy to answer that. Um, yeah, for me, and again, if if you are married to your religion and you don't want to hear it questioned, then th this will be the time to hit the uh, stop button. You can watch another video. Because when people ask me, I have no problem speaking my mind, but I know people have problems with some that uh, are against their particular religion. And I think this, could, this is a blanket statement. All religions, and I mean every single one of them, is man-made. I think that that is uh, an incontrovertible fact. There's just no way that any religion was God-made or was every religion, if it was ever God-made, has been corrupted by men. Men uh, destroy everything. Men pervert everything. And when I say that, I also mean women, but for the most part, I'm mostly talking about men. Um, I don't think a world that was ran by women would be at all what we have today. But... I think men pervert everything. They are power hungry. They are control hungry. And if they can slip that into anything, then they will. And I think religion is the biggest example um, that there is. It's a control mechanism. And so as far as the creator goes, in my opinion, the creator is beyond the ability for humans to, um, to, to know 100%. Does that mean that we don't know the creator at all? No. Does it mean that we can't be inspired by the Creator, that we can't be moved by the Creator? I mean, there's times where there's been stories of women that have lifted cars off of their child um, and things like that. And I don't doubt that. And I think that uh, certain times you might be able to, to absolutely pull from that unknown strength or that unknown wisdom. And so in saying that, I think that people who wrote the Bible, for all I know, they were inspired by the Creator. It doesn't mean that you can write a book and then pass it out to everyone else and say you have to believe this word for word. Because who wrote it? Men wrote it. And what do men do? They make mistakes. They embellish. They lie. They get confused. They didn't understand correctly. We all know that. So is there a time in my life that I felt like I was inspired by the Creator? Yeah, absolutely. Does it give me permission to then write that down and tell people you have to believe this? No. Does it mean that I can speak about it right now and say... These things I think are true. These things I think happen. These are my opinions of what the Creator is. Absolutely. We all have that ability, and we should listen to everyone. We should uh, read books that are written by you know everyone that has ever wanted to say, hey, this is my opinion. We read that. We see what fits with our reality, and we dismiss what doesn't. When somebody gives you a book and says, this is the Word of God, and at the last last verse, it says, you know, anybody who adds or subtracts from this book will be dealt with and won't get... And then you realize that there's 50 different versions of the Bible, and it's been changed numerous times. Well, then we need to take a step back and say, okay, time out here. Um, is this really true? Did these people just went and changed the book, even though it says that? And then you need to start looking into, you know, what copies do we have? What are the oldest copies we have? And it just seems like every book has been changed, has been corrupted, has been added to. I mean, the, one of the weirdest things to me, Christians who believe in the Bible usually are not fond of Catholics. That's just a, I'm just going to put that as a general statement. It doesn't mean always, but usually Christians don't like Catholicism. Yet Catholic priests and Catholic popes are the ones who assembled the books and decided what books went in, what didn't, what was the general idea, what was the theology. 
So you've got people who believe in a book word for word when the book was written by somebody they don't like and look at as an enemy or a corrupted group. I mean, what, what, what more do you need? That, you know, and there's people out there who say, well, I don't believe in, in religion. I believe in Jesus Christ. Th then that's fine. That's, I believe you can believe whatever you want behind closed doors or whatever. But if you're going to come and have a problem with things I say, then it better be because of my actions or because something I'm doing is hurting others but not just come at me because I don't have the same beliefs in a savior like you do. That's just, and that's what usually it comes down to is that, well, you, you don't believe in the savior. You don't believe in the Lord Jesus. And to me, all I need to do is look at the old Testament and see that they're talking about, um, a God who never changes. Uh, God says in the old Testament, I am the only savior. There will be no other. And yet then he comes in the, form of a man and says, now I'm your savior. And it's just like, wait, what? And one of the biggest tenets in the Old Testament is don't worship man. Uh, don't worship idols. Don't look at idols made of wood and stone. Don't worship anything that's in heaven above or anything under the ground below or on earth. Yet that's where people think Jesus is. They think Jesus is in heaven building mansions um, and they worship him. And to me, uh, I think that that is the biggest trick of all time. Um, you know, they put Jesus on a cross and put him in every church where he is hung on the cross. It's not like we see Jesus in churches as he's rising. We don't see an empty tomb with, you know, big glorious sun rays coming out of it. We don't see that. We see the nailed to the cross, God. And to me, what is a bigger disgrace? Again, if your mother or father died in a car accident, would you wear a necklace that had the car accident you know, seen on your necklace. Like, here, Dip, this is where my mom got hit by a car and died. So I wear this necklace now. And in this church where we worship her, we put the car scene on the wall and everybody bows to that car scene. That's crazy to me. I mean, that is the last thing that if Jesus ever came back that he would want to see is, oh, thanks a lot for wearing my death scene there on your neck. Um, so to me, it's just all a big deception that uh, I think. We just need to look at what people say. If somebody writes a book, um, you know, about what they think the creator is, hey, I'll read it. I, I'd love to hear ideas. Uh, but when that book says that, you know, your creator lived like a man, he had to come down here and live like a man, yet he had superpowers. He was able to walk on water, change water into wine. He was able to raise people from the dead. He was able to heal the sick, heal the blind. And th then you're like, well, wait, that's not living as a human. That's coming down here and living as a god. Uh, that's the big difference. And again, and again, if you're Christian, you might want to shut this off for sure right now because I'm going to say something that probably is considered... And here's... Not, before I say that, let me say another thing. People call me blasphemous. You blasphemed God. Let me explain something. You cannot blaspheme God if you don't believe in that God. So you can't... You can accuse somebody who's a Christian of blaspheming. You cannot accuse me of blaspheming. That makes no sense at all. I don't, how, how am I blaspheming if I am saying something about a God I don't believe in? That's, you know, you can't call that blaspheme. It doesn't make any sense. It's not even the correct terminology. So I'll get told all the time, you're blaspheming. Well, if I believed in the God that you did, then yes, you are absolutely right. I blasphemed. But it'd be like going to the UK and telling somebody, oop, you're driving on the wrong side of the road. You're driving on the wrong side of the road. I'm going to call the cops. They'd be like, big deal. We don't drive on that side of the road here. Nope, you're driving on the wrong side of the road. I go by my rules wherever I go around the world. You better drive on the right side of the road. I'm calling the cops. They'd laugh at you and say, sorry, we don't do things that way. So for me, when I get called a blasphemer, it's the funniest thing you can say to me because I don't believe in that God. So how am I blaspheming? Uh, it's simply not the case. Anyway, what I was going to say is when you look at the sacrifice, quote unquote, uh, that Jesus made, here's a statement where, you know, somebody will take this sound clip and make a video about it, I'm sure. But it is the truth. Jesus' death was the absolute least sacrificial thing ever done on earth. By that I mean, when you sacrifice something, the definition of sacrifice is you give up something that you want for something that you don't want. That's what a sacrifice is. When you've made that sacrifice, like, man, I really want to do this, but my wife wants to do this. You know, I'm going to make the sacrifice and I'm going to do what she wants instead. So you've given up something you want for something you don't want. Jesus was on earth where he was persecuted, he was spit at, he was called names, whatever, and he was beaten, and so he died on the cross to become God. So I venture to think 
There's not a person on earth that if told, hey, we're going to spit on you for a couple weeks, we're going to beat you for a day, you're going to get hung by the cross, but you get to become God. That, that's not a sacrifice. In that case, you've given up something you don't want for something you do want. So to me, I don't think there's a bigger sign of a non-sacrifice that there ever was. In fact, none of us would even, we would not even know. Would we know that we would become God? And I ask Christians that all the time. Did Jesus know he was God? And they always get very stuck on that question. Well, yes, no, but he knew. Well, he said, before Abraham, I am. So he knew he was before Abraham. So if I don't know I'm before Abraham. I don't know I'm before anybody. I don't remember a past life. So to me, I certainly don't know that I am going to be God. I don't <laughs> That's ridiculous. So for Jesus to basically go through his life that way, then he knew he was God. And again, I look at this and I say, well, now you've put God on earth. You've hung him on the cross. Couldn't he have just said, I don't want to feel any of these pains. I'm God. I don't want to feel whips. I don't want to feel the pain of dying on the cross. How would we know? Then he, hung, then he got hung on the cross and didn't feel a thing. Those are the kind of things I question. And again, I grew up in a place where I was not allowed to question those things. Anything like that was considered of the devil. It came from Satan. That thought in my mind was a trick. Satan came to try and get me off the road of truth. And that's what cults do. They, they tell you that you're not allowed to question the, the going narrative. Because the reason why is because if you question it, you will be able to tear it apart into pieces and it just doesn't make any sense. There's no possible way to me that God created a book and knew that men would create books and they would change it and they would mistranslate it and they would... It's written word. Period. It's written word. And anything can be taken any way you want it written-wise. That's the great thing about books. You know, somebody can read a Stephen King book and somebody else read the exact same book, and they can both take something completely different away from it. You can read a paragraph, and I can read a paragraph, and we both read it in a completely different way. And maybe that's the great thing about the Bible. That's the fantastic thing, that it can be used at different times for different you know, reasons. But to say that you have to believe this book is, a, is written by God, and you know, there's lines of the Old Testament that say that the book was, or that prophets have lied. God says, the prophets have lied about me. They've told lies about me, and yet we're given a book written by the prophets. So what well, What do you mean? He lied about you. Where? Where? In this book? So it just becomes this whole thing where I had to ask myself eventually, if God wanted to speak to me, how would he? And it has to be the same method for me and everybody else in the world, no matter if you're born in China or the Amazon rainforest. And that's when I realized, well, the only way God would speak to me is through my heart. And have I ever felt like there's something speaking to me from inside? Absolutely. My entire life, when you do something wrong, you feel that pain. You feel something telling you that wasn't right. And you punch that person in the face, that wasn't right. When you made that person happy, that was right. When you gave that person a hug, it felt good. They felt good. They were happy. You were happy. That's how God speaks to each person individually in their own way, no matter where you're born. And it cannot be corrupted. Well, it can be over time by that person. You know, I've said it before that I'm sure that if you killed somebody, you would feel an enormous pain and an enormous dagger in your in your stomach. But the next time you killed somebody, it'd probably be a little bit easier. You would still feel that pain. And then the next time, a little bit easier. And eventually, it probably doesn't feel bad anymore. But that's because you've driven the idea of the creator out of yourself. That's, you know, that's your own, your own problem, your own fault, not... Um, anything to do with the Creator. So, I, you know, to answer your question, I know it was a long answer, but I think that the Creator cannot be explained completely by anyone. So we should take all the pieces and from them all come up with a better idea of who we think the Creator is. To say that some people 3,000 years ago knew who the Creator was and that we must follow that is ridiculous because people grow, they learn, they grow up, they... Um, get rid of the bad and they accept the good. But that's not what happens when you put things like religion, and I'm putting science into the same category, when you stop people from looking outside of what currently is believed and you make people go forward with that belief, that is the absolute way to destruction, the way to being wrong. Because we never know if our mystery or our search is over. And so I think religion has stopped that search. Science has stopped that search. Um, you know, science needs to be open to all the possibilities, meaning 
uh, intuition and, and, and all those things, premonition, there's so many things that science needs to be open to that they've already decided that they it doesn't exist. And so once you've decided something doesn't exist, then you've dropped the ball. Then you no longer are capable of using an open mind to address any situation because you've already decided that what can exist and what can't. Well, then don't be surprised when you are wrong about things and that's what science has done. And because men don't want to ruin their name, um, they don't want to even venture the thought that they could be incorrect. But uh, yeah, when it comes to the creator, I don't have any fear anymore. I used to have this fear of, oh man, when I, what am I going to say about my life when I get to that, you know, that day where I face the creator? And I don't have that fear anymore because everything I do, I feel like I'm doing it for the right reasons and reasons I'll be able to explain if I ever face the creator on my final day. I don't think that uh, there's any chance that I would feel embarrassed about anything I've done. Um, and everything I do going forward will be with that in mind. What I fear about Christianity, and I actually see this, I've watched a lot of documentaries on occult practices, and what fears me about Christianity is there's this belief that if you simply believe in Jesus, that you're forgiven and you go to heaven. And that creates a terrible person sometimes. Does it create good people? Absolutely. My mom is one of the best people I know. I think I've told this story before, but she retired recently. And I said, well, what are you going to do? Just kick back, go on vacation? She goes, well, you know, there's a lot of things I got to do. I still have to visit people in prison because Jesus said to visit people in prison and I haven't done that yet. And I just thought I was taken aback. Like, how do you knock that religion when my mom wants to go visit people in prison because Jesus said to? It's hard to knock that. But there's also people out there who have led terrible lives or have no problem calling people every name in the book because they feel like it doesn't matter what they do, that as long as they believe in Jesus, that they go to heaven. I think that's a little scary. It allows people to um, really live dirtball lives thinking that they can just believe in Jesus in the end and that's all it takes. And then I think there's some people that lived terrible lives that did some nasty shit in their past. And so their only hope is Christianity. That's why you have so many born-again Christians, because when you lived your whole life as a drug dealer or a pimp or you a murderer, well, the, there's a religion out there that says, it doesn't matter what you've done, ask for an apology or ask to be forgiven and then believe in Jesus and you'll go to heaven. Well, there's some good things about that and there's some bad things. The, you know, the good thing is, is I don't disagree with that, that uh, who am I? I'm not a judge of anybody. So I say no matter what you've done in your life, you could probably make it correct by changing and, and doing better and um, no longer falling for the, uh, you know, the temptations that are out there. But I also think that um, it's scary because you've got people that may continue doing what they're doing and may use that as an excuse. Or if somebody like me comes along, imagine you've killed people in your life and then you found Jesus and you're a Christian and you go forward in your life and you've changed your life. Somebody like me comes along and you're going to hate me for everything I'm saying right now because what I'm saying is now making you feel less like, hey, I was I was a born again. I was forgiven for everything I'm doing. What you're saying is that Jesus isn't real and therefore I'm not forgiven. I don't know what they might think. I'm just saying that's what fears me about um, that religion. But I, you know, Christianity in a whole, if you follow the words of Jesus, then you're probably a good person. So I have no problem with that at all. Uh, I think Jesus is number two commandments, right? One, love God. Two, Love your neighbor. What's wrong with that? You know, that is a great, great way to uh, go through life. Um, I've often said it before. If you took care of the person to your left, the world would be perfect. We would have heaven on earth. If everyone simply turned to their left and whatever person was there made sure that they were happy. That's all it would take. It's that simple. And even if a mom had a child, well, she's going to take care of the child right away anyway, but she could probably still take care of the person to her left. And the person that's taking care of her would be able to do fine. So everybody would be happy. But we don't look at world that way. We don't look at life that way. We worry about making ourselves rich, ourselves comfortable. And when there's children dying on this plane, we've got uh, NASA who thinks it's more important to colonize Mars that uh, wants to spend $350 million dollars on rocket launches to put direct tv satellites in space when we can launch balloons and do the same thing it's it's just ridiculous it's a ridiculous understanding of this planet and what we're supposed to do and how we could take care of each other and how life could be perfect for everyone and then 
When all that's done, you want to worry about space, you want to worry about Mars, you want to go to... That's fine. I wouldn't have any money. I wouldn't have any problem with people spending money on space if the world was perfect. It'd be like, sure, go up there, check it out, see what's going on, I don't know. Go check it out. Go try and get out. Whatever. I don't care. But we're certainly not anywhere near that. Y you, you want to go to Mars where there's no water, where there's no food, where there's no air, where you can't live without a suit on? When we've got people dying here, like, let's put our resources back in line here, guys. Not... Uh, believe in nonsense and you know again the ISS has been doing what it's been doing for 17 years never never given anything to mankind never given a thing so anyway I don't want to go any longer but I will take calls at least once or twice a week so I do appreciate uh, everyone being here and listening hopefully you enjoyed it again leave me in the comments a, a comment if you liked it didn't like it thought I talked to people for too long thought I didn't shut up um, or think of another uh, layout or another show format that you might like. Again, join us tomorrow on the Globusters channel. It's in the description below. You can click on that, become a subscriber. 12 noon, and let me check my text messages. I might actually know who's going to be on the show. Let me see if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Oh, no. Okay. I thought we were going to have. Um, somebody tomorrow, but it looks like we're going to be uh, two or three weeks till we get that person on. So we were going to have Dream Rockwell on the show tomorrow, but um, she is not going to be ready for that show. So we'll do it uh, a week or two later. So I don't know what's going on for sure on the show tomorrow, but it will be a good one, no doubt. Um, so be kind, don't lie, and open up your mind because the truth is nowhere else. Till next time, guys, this has been Jaronism. Peace! Ignition sequence start. Two, one. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaronism back with another live video for you this evening. It is live. Glad you're joining me. So, thank you to those in the chat, to those at home, to those in their car to those in an airplane, wherever you might be. Thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. I'm going to be taking calls tonight, so I will give out that number in a little bit. Probably about 10 minutes. We're going to cover quick two topics first, and then we will uh, come back to the phones. I'll give that number out. You can call in from wherever you might be for whatever reason you may have. If you have a question, comment, uh, something that's going on in the world now, uh, something flat earth related, something round earth related, you hate me, you love me, doesn't matter. Call in. If you get too crazy, I could just dump you. It's easy. So what we're going to start out with is... Let me get this going for you. Hey, got another subscriber. Thank you very much. Buzz Aldrin takes a chair shot. What's better than that? Let's look at a few things that happened uh, recently. If you've seen this uh, Flat Earth Talk video, basically what happened is Nathan Thompson, who is the founder of the official Flat Earth and Globe Earth discussion page on Facebook, uh, ran into a NASA employee, uh, questions him or you know, kind of uh, rushes him here at the uh, Starbucks. And there was also a video done that we're going to watch in a second here by a science lover. Um, but I did want to show a few things here first and just kind of point out that I'm not in complete agreement with this kind of uh, rush, I guess you might call it uh, rush journalism. Um, I think there's better ways to go about it. You're not going to get a good conversation with somebody kind of coming at them this way. So if you are going to do something like this, it would be good to go up to them and say, hey, do you mind if I ever gave you a call and we had an interview or I was able to have a conversation with you? That's how you're going to get these guys to, um, to say something. And he said some interesting things. For and he said it was because of saliva. I'm going to get this out of the way. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about here. I, I don't know about astronauts drowning in space, except maybe drowning in pussy when they get back from space. Wow. So he, he doesn't know anything about astronauts almost drowning in space. And even though it's, you know, happened twice, I think, and one time that was pretty major, when the helmet filled up with water, and now they have to have snorkels. Um, that's pretty significant. And for somebody that's such a big science lover who obviously thinks that uh, astronauts are slightly below gods. We go gods, then astronauts. 
and that they are just cleaning up on the women every uh, during the off season. Um, it just makes no sense to me that this is the kind of comments we get from people. He says he's never heard of astronauts almost drowning in space. Well, have you heard of the uh, plankton that was found on the windows of the ISS? Look that up and then go ahead and make some new excuse about that one too. But su I suggest that the people who are so into science in every way possible do a little bit more research into what it is that they believe. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just say, I love science and I don't have to look into it all because there's a lot of things coming out like the 75 papers that were retracted recently because they were done fraudulently. How about the plankton in space? How about the fact that our satellite communication, as people think, or our internet comes from the satellites when the internet is done via cables that are across the ocean? So just because somebody told you and sat in some sort of conversation at some point that our phones and our internet talk to space doesn't mean that that's true. You might want to do a little bit of research on that. Yes, that makes sense to me. But as far as this man's lunacy is concerned, I don't know what the fuck he's going on about. I also don't see why this topic is the smoking gun for flat earthers. Ah, astronauts have a dangerous job. We knew it. The earth is flat. No, it's astronauts have a dangerous job. They're in a pool. They're drowning in water. Everything that we see is CGI. We've never seen a real video or picture of the earth from space. Those are the things that are causing flat earthers to question what we've all been told. Things that you should question. Go look up pictures of the earth. Go to the live ISS feed and watch that. Try to find a night scene. You'll see nothing but black. Then go look up ISS at night on Google and look, look at all the beautiful pictures of all the lights on Earth and all the beautiful scenery. For instance, saying that the astronaut almost drowned because of saliva, which doesn't make any sense. It's not the official case. Uh, so those are the kind of things that I think would be better if it was a conversation or an interview where you're talking with this guy and let them kind of hang themselves, not just... Uh, Rushing them at a Starbucks is not the best way to do it. But let's scroll down here a little bit and look at some of the comments. And the first one here, let's uh, read this one because I think it's classic. But uh, it definitely deserves to be the... Uh Keyboard Warrior, comment of the week, no doubt. How about this one? If you don't believe in science, then stop using electricity, your cell phone and camera, and the internet, because guess what? The internet works thanks to satellites that orbit our roundish planet. So it's not just a one comment thing either. You see here, you got 164 thumbs up from uh, people who also in some way believe that satellite comes from, or I mean, uh, internet comes from satellites in orbit. So then you look at these comments down here, uh, Daniel Robinson, representing, says actually they work based on cables on the bottom of oceans. Satellites are not real. They use ships and long cables miles long. And somebody else comes back and says, yeah, for everyday people who don't mind slower speeds overseas, the sub-communications cables network, then microwave link for fast rich users, then satellites for rural areas. This person says, I'm curious as to your explanation of how global positioning systems work if there are no satellites. So go ahead and look up how phones with... Uh, with no GPS, know your location. It's easily triangulation. You don't need satellites to tell you where you are. You just need three cell phone towers, which uh, I hate to tell you, exist on the ground. They don't exist in the uh, in the thermosphere. They're not orbiting the Earth. They didn't cost $350 million. And they don't just maintain orbits for 20 years and all the fun stuff that we're told satellites do. Um, this person says, ah, ha, 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 how the hell does GPS then work? Work then, magic? So these people are classic. Um, you can see the ISS orbiting the Earth. What is it if it's not real? So again, because somebody tells you that the ISS is in the sky, and then they, then go back to the live feed. Call me when you find anything that resembles the pictures. They won't because they can't show it to you live. Also, this badly bearded biker looking dude is the founder of an official flat Earth talk panel in West Let's go ahead and start the barrage of ad hominem attacks. ...website or something, and they were really excited that he ran into a real NASA employee in the video description. This guy right here, hold on, I'm gonna wait for him to get to the front of the line. And then I'm gonna ask him some more questions. There's a real NASA employee right here. Just wanted to point out this badly shaven beard here. This is a weak beard game. It looks like a hairy toilet seat. If you do this with your beard, stop. 
I know why he's doing this. He wants to make it look like he has a stronger jawline than he has. And it doesn't even look like he has a jawline, judging from this angle. It looks like his neck is trying to eat his cheeks. And with the way his beard is shaven, it looks like armpits. If I didn't see his nose, I would be 100% convinced I'm looking at a close-up of an armpit. Hey, my man. <laughs> my man. Sir. Just the, the spacewalk. He won't, he won't talk to me. Sir. Now this mongoloid is starting to attract attention to himself, the other customers have now been made aware of his presence, and unfortunately for them, they're in for quite the shit show coming up. Look, he was all nice. He was all nice. He gave me NASA cartoon freaking emblems. <laughs> that <clears throat> Let me stop right here and just mention that we have to remember, number one, that the deception that's going on, we don't know which people know. Okay, so we can't just go to people on the street that work for NASA because they are probably deceived themselves. So all those people that are at JPL that watch Curiosity land on Mars, which is a complete and total joke, fabrication, a lie, a hoax. Well, if I had all those people in a room, I wouldn't even be able to guess if any of them knew that. Because all that they're doing is they're designing these robots, they're designing these trajectories and these flight paths, and then they're handing it off to NASA, who's sending them up in a rocket, and then next thing they know, they start getting data returned and audio signals to their computer. And at that point, why would anybody question it? Because they designed it, they saw it on TV get launched to space, and they're getting tones, is what they've programmed the satellite to do, is respond to them with tones. So it's kind of hard to picture why when they tell you what time a light will go over your head, you can't then draw from that the conclusion that they must be the same thing. That the thing I see on TV with people inside of it must be the light I see in the sky because someone told me. It doesn't even equate. It doesn't You can't go from one to the other. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Um, so some people, yeah, I just basically wanted to point that out. But let's go to this video over here. One second, I'll bring it up. This is the video I was talking about um, that was done by, and let me get you the right name before I say it. Penguins Zero. Penguins. He's got the subscriber base 1.7 million. Uh, his video's already got 116,000 views. And this is him just extremely frustrated um, about this particular YouTube video. But let's hear how he uh, voices his frustration. If there's any children in the room, I would uh, put some earmuffs on them right about now. What's up, everybody? It's critical. Today I saw a video that really salted my rectal flaps. It's Let's start out with that. So, is, I don't know if that's supposed to be funny. Like, today I saw a video that really salted my rectal flaps. I don't know. Let's keep going. Another sub. Thank you. From a flat earther as he harasses a NASA employee at a Starbucks, and it's truly just infuriating. I'm not going to go into depth about how stupid flat earthing is, so I'll just sum it up by saying to anyone who truly believes the earth is flat, you're wrong. It's not an opinion. It's genuinely just you're wrong. So, it's not an opinion. It's it's not, it's just generally, it's it's a fact, you're wrong. Make, okay, good evidence there. Also, I'm sorry in advance that this troglodyte filmed this vertically. I guess flat earthers also don't believe in horizontal videos. Those must just be a scam from government reptilian humanoid officials. But anyway, let's dive in. Pardon me? Alright guys, I'm here with a real NASA employee. Legit NASA employee. So here's our protagonist. I didn't mean to pause it during a shaky cam screen. That's my apologies there. I know this looks like one of the fucking photographs from the Ring movies. But for how stupid this man's actions are from this point forward, I think it'd even be better if he had blurred his own face out. And I asked him. I said, uh, astronauts have almost died in space. Uh, they get they got water in their suit and they almost drowned. 